Okay, all praise to the Mosai. Uh, tonight's topic is called The House of the Thief. The House of the Thief. Let's open up with the book of Obadiah, chapter 1. Obadiah, verse 1. Let's start there. The book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. So now, this is the, the Lord is showing Obadiah a vision concerning Edom. So we're going to deal with Edom, and then we're going to come back to this. Let's understand who Edom is. Okay, give me Genesis 25 now. Genesis 25 is 20. The whole Genesis book of Abadiah is about, the whole book of Abadiah is concerning Edom. Understand that? The whole chapter, the whole book. Okay? Genesis 25 is 20. Come on. Genesis chapter 25 is 20. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban the Syrian. Read. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. So our foremother, Rebekah, she could not conceive, you understand? And our forefather, Isaac, prayed to the Lord. The Lord heard his prayers, and our foremother conceived. Read. And the children struggled together within her. Mm -hmm. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. So these two children that she conceived, now they are fighting within her womb. She went to inquire of the Lord to find out what's going on. Come on. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two men of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Read. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. So now, verse 22 says, the children struggled together within her, meaning there was fighting. Now she's finding out that actually there's two nations in your stomach. Two men of people, meaning two different types of people shall be separated from your stomach. You understand? The one people will be stronger than the other and the elder shall serve the younger. So now the Lord is giving her the answers of why this is going on. You understand? So give me the book of Sirach 33 verse 14 so we understand why the setup is the way that it is. Come on. Ecclesiasticus, how the Lord creates things upon this earth. Sirach 33 verse 14. Ecclesiasticus chapter 33 verse 14. Good is set Go against evil. And life Come on. against death. So is the godly against the sinner. And the sinner against the godly. So now, according to how the Lord creates things, says good is set against evil, the godly against the sinner, and the what? And the sin against the godly. Meaning two opposites, polar opposites of one another. Go ahead. So look upon all the works of the Most High, and there are two and two, one against another. So the way the Most High God creates things, he creates things in pairs, one against another, two and two, one against another. That's why we are reading what we are reading in the book of Genesis. Why the children be struggling and fighting within a stomach. The Lord made it so. Okay, let's go back. Genesis chapter 25 now. And verse, 20, uh, verse 24. Genesis chapter 25 verse 24. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. So now she delivers the babies. It says there were twins in her womb. Fraternal twins, not identical. Fraternal. Because verse 23 tells you what type of twins there were. Two nations, two men of people, we shall be separated. Read verse 24 again. Genesis 25 verse 24. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there Read. were twins in her womb. Come on. And the first came out red, all over like an hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. 
So now the first boy, remember verse 23 says, the elder shall serve the younger. Now the elder one is coming out because he is the first born. The first came out red all over like an hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. So the first boy was red, and he was hairy, and they gave him this name, Esau, wasted away because he did not have melanin. Go ahead. And after that came his brother out, mm -hmm. and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. Red. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bathed him. So now this is 20 years later when, guess what? When the, when the Lord blessed them with a child. He was 40 when he was married. And 20 years later, that's when the Lord blessed them with these two boys. Okay. It says, and after that came his brother out and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. Notice Jacob's color is not mentioned. Why? Give me that in Genesis 2 verse 7. Because everybody from the beginning looked like Adam. Read that. Genesis 2 verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. You know what? Give me Genesis 1 26 first. Genesis 1 verse 26. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Go ahead. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have mm -hmm. dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the earth and over, and over the cattle and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So now what you want to notice is, let us make men in our image and after our likeness. So when now, when Adam was formed, because he was the first man, you see what the Lord looks like. Give me Genesis 2 verse 7, because it says, let us make men in our image and after our likeness. So how Adam going to look like, that's how you know what the Lord looks like. The most high God looks like, the angels look like. Genesis 2 verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Come on. And the Lord God for man of the dust of the ground. Read. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So Adam was formed from the dust of the ground. From the earth. The soil. You understand? The soil is what they vary different shades of brown. The deeper you dig, the more darker shades it becomes. Okay, so Aram was a so-called black man this day. Okay, now, let's go back to Genesis 25 now. Verse 26 again. Genesis chapter 25, verse 26. Read. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years when she bathed him was three score years old when she, Rebecca, bear the kids. Okay, come on. So now you see Jacob, the reason why Jacob's color is not mentioned is because Jacob looked like Aram. The reason why it's so significant for Esau's color to be mentioned because it was different. He was different from everybody else. You understand the way he looked. Okay, come on. Verse 37. And the boys grew and Esau was a cunning Three. hunter a man of the field and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Mm -hmm. You see that thing? Do I, even though our mannerism is different, Esau likes to hunt, Jacob likes to dwell in tents. Meaning what? Jacob is, keeps things simple. You understand? Jacob likes to chill. Esau likes to hunt. Two different, two men of people. Go ahead. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. So our forefather Isaac, he loved Esau because Esau liked to hunt and he liked to eat the, the, the game that Esau used to would hunt. You understand? But our forefather Rebekah loved Jacob because she understood the prophecy. You understand? That the elder will serve the younger. So she understood all of that. Read. And Jacob sought pottage. And Esau came from the field and he was faint. He was hungry. Go ahead. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called uh -huh. Edom. You see that thing? So now it says, Feed me with the same red pottage that looked like me. 
And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. So Esau's name was changed to Edom. Okay? Esau's name was changed to Edom, which means red. That's why it says the same red portage. What was in the portage? Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Hebrews 12, verse 16. We're going we're gonna to visit the book of Hebrews again later on. So keep that in mind. Hebrews 12, verse 16. Read that. So, in, so we can understand what was in, what, what made that portage to be red. Okay, come on. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel on. of meat sold his birthright. Read that again. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Mm, Lest there be up. any... Okay, read. Come on, come on. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel yeah. of meat sold his birthright. Who for one morsel of meat, of meat, of meat, meat. So what made that portage to be red was rare meat because it was uncooked. So the meat is what made it red because it was still bloody. There was still blood dripping out of the, that meat. You understand? And that's, what, that's how he likes it. That's why today when white people Esau, when they go to restaurants, that's why when you go to restaurants now, when you be ordering food, we want a steak, they'll be asking you, do you want it rare, medium rare, or fully cooked, or well done? We, we want it well done. You understand? But he was okay with that. And today he's doing the same thing. You understand? That's why they like to eat meat that they still have blood dripping out of it. You understand? Let's go back. Genesis chapter 25, verse 30. Genesis chapter 25, verse 30. And Esau said to Jacob, Wait. Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Uh -huh. Therefore was his name called Edom, meaning red. Now let's go to the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary on page 141. The Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary on page one. Okay, so, um, so this is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Okay, the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary for those who do not have it. But I believe everybody has a dictionary now, right? Everybody got one, right? Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Everybody yes, got sir. their dictionary. Yes, sir. No, okay, sir. I haven't got one. One. Okay, so um, I think it, it will be given to you, uh, but we have gotten them. Okay, so read that, the definition on page 141, Edom. The definition of Edom. On the screen, read that. Mm -hmm. The definition of Edom in the Zondervan Come Compact on. Bible Dictionary, page 141. Edom, Edomites, the nation... And it's people who are the descendants of no, no. Esau. Read, read, read that part, read that part again. Read. Hold on, wait, read the definition again because you're skipping words here. I want that word in the parentheses. Read that again. The definition of Edom Edomites, red. Red, come on. The nation and its people. Who are the descendants of Esau? The nation, the nation and his people who are the descendants of Esau. Okay, now let's get the next page now. This is the next page. Okay, on page 142. So read that. Edom figures prominently. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as a scene of great figure as as a scene of great future judgments see, see what he's saying isaiah 34 verse 5 hold on 
It says, Edom figures prominently. I don't know what's going on with your reading. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgments, meaning Esau's judgment has not happened yet. The white man has not been judged for all the crimes, all the atrocities, all the destruction that is done upon this earth. His judgment is still coming, still outstanding. You understand? That's going to happen when the Lord returns. Go ahead. She is what? She is, she is the only neighbor of the Israelites. Come on, say with me. Who was not given any promise. Okay, okay, okay. I need, uh, Brother John, I need you to read because I don't understand what's going on. Okay. Read that again. Edom figures prominently. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgments. See notably. Go ahead, she is the what? No, she is. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from God. You see that thing? It says, Esau, she is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from God. Why? Because they have not paid for their crimes. You understand? All the other nations, yes, they're all put us in slavery, but they, they're going to get some type of mercy. But the white man, Esau, Edom, Idumia, they are not going to get any, there is no promise of mercy from the Lord. You understand? Because they must get their just reward, which is judgment. Okay? Now, give me the book of Isaiah 34. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 5. Isaiah 34, verse 5. Let's read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34, verses 5. For my soul shall be bathed in heaven. Read that Behold, again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34, verses 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse uh -huh. to judgment. You see what the Lord is saying? Read that again, Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34, verse 5. Read it again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34, verses 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Read. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Mm -hmm. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven. The heaven is not talking about where the Lord is. He's talking about the ruling nation right now in these last days, which is Esau, Edom, Idumia, a.k.a. the white man. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven, meaning in the white man's kingdom. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. So Idumia is going to be judged when the Lord returns upon the people and upon the people of my curse to judgment. That's when the wicked is going to get their just reward. Judgment. You understand? That's why it says they have not been promised any, any type of mercy from the Lord. Because judgment must happen unto, unto them. For all the, the evils they've done upon this earth, they, they must pay. Because it's what? Just judgment. Go ahead. Next verse. Come on. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. Uh -huh. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord had the sacrifice in Bozrah and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. Okay, all praise to the Most High. Okay, let's continue. Um, Isaiah 34, verse 5 again. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 5. Read. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Mm -hmm. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. So now this is future judgment that's coming for Idumia. Okay, read verse 6. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. The blood of Idumia. The sword of the Lord will be filled with the blood of Idumia. Come on. It is made fat with fatness uh -huh. and with the blood of lambs and goats. And the fats of the kidneys of rams. 
Read. And the Lord had a sacrifice in Bozrah. For the Lord, it, because the Lord, hold on, for the Lord, meaning because the Lord has a sacrifice in Bozra. Bozra is Edom's capital. Today is the United States of America, Babylon the Great. Go ahead. And a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. And a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. So when it says, and is made, with fat, is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of kidneys of rams, because the Lord is going to perform a sacrifice in the land of Bozrah. You understand? And a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. Watch this. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay. So let's get the definition of the word Idumia. Okay, read that. From the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary on page 239. Read that. The definition of idumia. Uh -huh. Pertaining idumia. Pertaining to Edom. Pertaining to Edom. So idumia belongs to Edom. Idumia is Edom. Go ahead. Greek and Roman name for Edom. So idumia is a Greek and Roman name for Edom. So now we understand who Edom is. Who idumia is. Okay. Idumia, Edom. Esau is the same race of people. You understand? Go back to Isaiah 34 verse 6 again. Isaiah chapter 34 verse 6. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats and with, with the fat of kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Bozrah really? and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. So now watch this. Keep going. It says what? For the Lord had a what? For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Bozrah. Stop right there. For the Lord had a sacrifice in Bozrah. Let's get some account of what's coming. You understand? The future judgments of Idumia that the Lord will perform in the land of Bozrah. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 63 verse 1. Isaiah 63 and verse 1. Watch this. For the Lord had a sacrifice in Bozrah. Read that. Isaiah chapter 63 verse 1. Come on. Who is this that cometh from Edom? You see that thing? This is Isaiah speaking now. Who is this that's coming from Edom? Okay. Because Isaiah is being shown the great future judgment that's coming for Idumia Edom. Read that again. Isaiah chapter 63 verse 1. Read. Who is this? That cometh from Edom. Uh -huh. With dyed garments from Bozrah. With dyed. These, his garment is dyed. He says, this man that's coming from Edom. With dyed garments from Bozrah. Bozrah is Edom's capital. Go ahead. This that, this that is glorious in his apparel. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. Uh -huh. I that speak in righteousness. Mighty to save. He says, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. So now this is like a, a question and answer situation. He's asking the question and he's responding. He's responding to the question he's asking. Go ahead. This is Christ speaking, by the way. By the way, this is Christ speaking through Isaiah. Go ahead. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? He says, why are you red in your, in your apparel? Because remember, verse 1 says, with dyed garments from Bozrah. So now he's telling you the color of that of the apparel. He says, wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? Why is your garment red? Why is it red? Go ahead. And thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. He says, your clothes is like the one that treaded in the wine fat. Hold this. Give me the book of Genesis. Okay, Genesis 49. Watch this. Genesis chapter 49 and verse... Verse 11. Genesis 49, verse 11. Read that. Genesis chapter 49, verse 11. Come on. Binding his fowl in, unto the vine. Binding his fowl unto the vine. Talk about Christ. Read. Binding his fowl unto the vine. Uh -huh. And his asses called unto the choice vine. The choice vine, that's us. Read. He washed his garments in wine. 
You see that thing? Is, Moses is, hold on. Moses is seeing Christ. He says, wait a minute. Christ, it's as if he washed his garments in wine. Remember what he said in Isaiah. Is wherefore are thou ready in thine apparel and thy garments like, like him that treaded in the wine fed. Okay? Moses is seeing the same thing that Isaiah is seeing. You understand? Read that again. Verse 11. As Genesis chapter 49 verse 11. Read. Binding his fall unto the vine. Uh -huh. And his ass is called unto the choice vine. Read. He washed his garments in wine. Mm -hmm. And his clothes in the blood of grapes. You see what he's saying? He washed. He, who washes his clothes in wine? Who does that? Even when we was in our element, when we was rich, we never done that. We never washed our clothes in wine. Okay? And his clothes in the blood of grapes. We never did that. So what is Moses see? He's seeing Edom, the, 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 the day of vengeance of our Lord upon Bozrah, Edom. So go back to where he was at now. Isaiah 63, verse 2 again. You know what? Okay. Isaiah chapter 63, me, verse 2. On, wait, wait. Before you get Isaiah, give me Revelation 19. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 19. Okay. Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. Watch this. Revelation 19, verse 3. We read this all the time, but this is, guess what? This is future prophecy of the judgment that will happen upon this earth. Watch this. Read that. Revelation 19, verse 13. Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. Go ahead. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. So now he's telling you, and John, his name the revelator, is... hold on, he says he was clothed with a vesture, meaning his garment dipped in blood. So the question is, did he take his garments? Did he take his garment before he put it on? Did he dip it in blood? No, that was the blood of all the killing that he's going to be doing, as if he dipped it in blood. That means he was soaking wet. You ever seen you take a clothing item, you dip it in water, and then you just pull it out? That's how it was. That's how. That's what John the Revelator see. Okay, read that again. Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. And he was clothed a vesture dipped in blood. Read. And his name is called the word of God. And his name is called the word of God. Now, Revelation chapter 14, verse 20. Read that. Revelation chapter 14, verse 20. Go ahead. And the wine press was trodden without the city. The wine press is talking about the people he's going to kill, Bozra. Go ahead. And starting with our people first. Read. And blood came out of the wine press. And the blood came out of the wine press. You ever see the people that be making wine? They put the grapes in some kind of a container. They be stepping on it with their feet. Yes. Read. Come on. Even... Unto the horse bridles. I even unto the horse bridles. I Meaning, you see, when you put, be pulling even, a horse, hold on. When you're pulling a horse with a bridle, he says the blood is going to get to that level. Read. Even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Now, let's go back. Isaiah 63, verse 2 again. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 2. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, mm -hmm. and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? Come on, read. I have trodden the wine press alone. Now, this is Christ speaking. I have trodden the wine press alone, meaning I did it by myself. I don't need no help. Read. And Come of on. the people, there was none with me. In a, and of the people, For I will tread. Nobody was helping me to do this thing. Okay? Nobody's helping me. I'm going to do it by myself. Read. For I will tread them in mine anger. Uh -huh. Come on. And trample them in my fury. Read. And, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. Now we understand why his garments was as if he washed them in blood. In what? In, 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 the, in the blood of the grapes. In wine. It says what? And their blood is telling you what the... What, 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 what the wine fed is, okay? Their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. Like we read in Revelation 19 verse 13. 
he's, he's, he, he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood because of what? Because of the blood, because of all the killing, the slaughtering he's going to be doing in the land of Bozra. Read. And I will stain all my raiment. And I will stain all my raiment, meaning all my garment. Read. For the day of vengeance is in my heart. Woo, that's some heavy stuff. For the day of vengeance is in my heart. This is Christ speaking right here. Right now, he's, guess, guess what? He's holding himself back. You think he doesn't want to come down here and bring, put, put the white man to death? Of course he does. But guess what? The 144,000 must be sealed and the wicked must be revealed. Read that again. Okay? Read that again, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 4. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart. Read. And the year of my redeemed is come. The year of my redeemed is come. Give me Luke 1, verse 6, Luke 1, verse 71. And the day of my redeemed is come. Who is he redeeming? He is redeeming us from the hands of our enemies and those that hate us. Read that. Luke 1, verse 71. Luke chapter 1, verse 71. Come on. That we should be saved from our enemies. Come on. And from the hand of all that hate us. You see that thing? We should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Give me that in 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 39. 2 Kings 17 verse 39. Watch this. 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 39. Go ahead. But the Lord your God ye shall fear, uh -huh. and he shall deliver, deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. You see that thing? The Lord is going to deliver us out of the hand of all our enemies because all our enemies, they hate and despise us. Let's go back now. Isaiah 63, verse 4 again. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 4. Read. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart. And the year of my redeemed is come. So when you watch that movie, right? When you watch that movie, what's that movie? Uh, Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen. You hear what, when the fallen comes down, it says, vengeance is mine. You must watch the scene, it's glorious. Okay? When he, step up, he steps up on the scene, things just be blowing up all over the place. You understand? Read that again. Verse 4. I, Isaiah chapter 63, verse 4. Go ahead. The day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. The year of my redeemed is come, because the Lord will deliver us from the hands of our enemies. Go ahead. And I looked, and there was none to help. There was none to help. As I looked, and there was none to help, because I did it by myself, Christ is saying. Read. And I wondered... That there was none to uphold. Meaning nobody could do nothing. Read. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me. My own arm brought salvation to me. Because he has to do it. You understand? You get satisfaction when we be chopping heads off. This thing of using guns. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. I don't want that. I want a sword. You see? When you see the blade, just be chopping the head off. That thing right there, that's justice. That's therapy. We want that thing. Read. Therefore, mine own arm brought salvation unto me. Uh -huh. And my fury, it upheld me. It says, my anger kept me going. You see what Christ is saying? It says, my anger and my fury, it upheld me. My anger kept me going when I was chopping these Idumians. You understand? The sacrifice that the Lord will be performing in Bozra. Go ahead. This is some, you see this thing right here? This is beautiful stuff right here. I know the sisters be squeamish. Listen, keep going. And I will tread down the people in my anger. You see, now he's telling you what the wine, who the wine fed is in verse 2. He's telling you who the wine fed is. He says, and I will tread down the people in my anger. Who's the people? I do me. A race of people on this earth. Read. And make them drunk in my fury. You see that thing? And make them drunk in my fury. Meaning they're going to be drunk with my fury. Go ahead. And I will bring down 
their strength to the earth. And I will bring down their strength to the earth, meaning no more rulership. They are not going to rule nobody no more forever. That's what he's saying right there. Now, go back to Isaiah 34, verse 5 and 6 again. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Really? Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia uh -huh. and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Upon the people of my curse to judgment. Upon the people of my curse to judgment. This is the day when the wicked will get their just judgment. Read. Like we read in the Zondervan, great future judgment. That's what we're reading here. Go ahead. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. Uh -huh. It is made fat with fatness. And with the blood of lambs and goats. Read. And with the fat of of the kidneys of rams. Mm -hmm. And the Lord had sacrificed, and the Lord had a sacrifice in Bozra. The Lord had a, a sacrifice in Bozra, read. And a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. So now, what we just went over is what? We just went over concerning Edom, what will happen to who Edom is, first and foremost. We discovered who Edom is, the Greek and Roman name for Edom. So today, they call them what? They call themselves the Spaniards. They call themselves the French, the Dutch, the British, the Portuguese, the Europeans, the Russians, the Americans. That's what they call themselves. But back in the day, they used to be called the Greeks and the Romans. Before that, they were called Idumians. Idumia. You understand? That's their biblical name. Edom, Esau, Idumia. That's their name. It's one race. Because a lot of the times they make it seem like, no, Russians are better than Americans. No, no, they are all the same. Because they are one race of people. We need to understand that thing. The Buddhists, the Dutch, the British, the French, the Portuguese, they are all the same. They are all Edomites. You understand? There's no such thing that, no, the Portuguese are better than the Americans. Mm -mm, they are all the same. Okay? They are all the same. Watch this. Let's go back to Obadiah now. Obadiah verse 1. I went a little bit ahead, but that's okay. That's fine. All praises to the Most High. Okay, let's go back. Obadiah verse 1. I'm getting carried away. Obadiah chapter, Obadiah verse 1. Let's read that. Okay. The book of Obadiah, verse 1. Read. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Concerning Edom, concerning Edom, Esau, Idumia, a.k.a. the white man. Go ahead. We have heard a rumor from the Lord. We have heard a rumor a, from the Lord, read. And an ambassador is sent among the heathen. And an ambassador is going to be sent from these heathens. You understand? Read. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. So this ambassador is going to come from the heathen, and he's going, to con he's going to gather them together and say, you know what? We need to go against this beast. We need to destroy America. The, one of the, he says, an ambassador is sent among the heathen, and this ambassador is going to say, arise ye, let us, meaning all the heathens, rise up against her in battle. Meaning what? We need to destroy them. Watch this. Let's deal with the ambassador that is sent from the heathen. Give me Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 45. The person that is going to activate this ambassador. Let's see who that is. Jeremiah 50 verse 45. Let's read that. Jeremiah chapter 50. Verse 45. Go ahead. Therefore, hear ye the counsel of the Lord, mm -hmm. that he against Babylon, and his purposes that he hath purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. The what? The land of the Chaldeans. So the subject matters about Babylon and the Chaldeans, which is making reference to the same thing. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 13, verse 19. We're coming back here. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 19. Watch this. Babylon, the Chaldeans, it's all making reference to the same man, the same race of people. Okay, watch this. Isaiah 13, verse 19. Read that. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 19. Go ahead. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, uh -huh. the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency. So because the Chaldeans of ancient Babylon was the upper echelon, the rich, the nobles, the dukes, 
Go ahead. Shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So now, because ancient Babylon was not destroyed like Sodom and Gomorrah. So it's not talking about ancient Babylon. It's talking about what? Give me Psalms 137 verse 7. It's talking about Esau, Edom, Idumia. Okay, watch this. This is what David said. Psalms chapter 137 verse 7. Read. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom. Edom is the subject. Read. In the day of Jerusalem, who mm -hmm. said, race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. He says, race it, race it. Who said, race Edom was saying, race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. Meaning what? When the Babylonians, you understand, that was destroying us, guess what? Esau was helping them. Okay. They said, race it, race it, meaning destroy it, destroy it, even to the foundation thereof. So when Babylon was destroying us under Nebuchadnezzar, they banned our books, our records, they banned the temple. That's why Nehemiah and Zerubbabel had to go back and rebuild because of the Babylonians did at the help of Esau. Go ahead. O oh, daughter of Babylon. O oh, daughter of Babylon. You see, Edom is, Edom is the daughter of Babylon. Like mother, like daughter. Go ahead. Oh, daughter of Babylon, uh -huh. who are to be destroyed. Who must be destroyed. Destined for destruction. Read. Happy shall he be mm -hmm. that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. You see that thing? Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Because they served us with what? Death, destruction, pillaging, rape, murder, stealing, robbing, everything. Theft slander you understand accusations they are accusing us day and night every day on the news look at the zondo commission you understand they'll be accusing us day and night and enca oh my god man whoa i'm waiting for the lord's judgment oh, patiently by the way read that again verse eight let me calm down read verse eight again psalms chapter 137 verse eight go ahead oh daughter of babylon mm -hmm. who are to be destroyed Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. As thou hast served us. Now, let's go back. Jeremiah 50 verse 45. Now we understand who Babylon is, who the Chaldeans are. He's talking about who? Edom. Edom. Okay. Jeremiah 50 verse 45. Read that again. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 45. Go ahead. Therefore, hear ye the counsel of the Lord. Uh -huh. That he had taken against Babylon. Against, against Babylon. Against Babylon. Edom, the daughter of Babylon. Go ahead. And his purposes, that he has purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. The land of the Chaldeans, that's Bosra. Today they call it the United States of America. Go ahead. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. You see that part right there? Remember what we read in Obadiah. Go back to Obadiah. Verse 1 again. It says, the surely, meaning without a doubt, it's a fact. Surely, the least of the flock shall draw them out. The least of the flock is going to draw Babylon or the Chaldeans, Edom, out to war. Okay, read that. Obadiah verse 1 again. Obadiah verse 1. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Mm -hmm. We have heard a rumor from the Lord. Read. And an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. So now this ambassador is going to be activated by the list of the flock that we read in Jeremiah. Go back to Jeremiah 50 verse 45. The, this list of the flock is going to activate the ambassador that is going to send from the heathen that will say, Arise ye, let us rise up against her in battle. This list of the flock is going to activate the ambassador that will be sent from the heathen. Read that again. Jeremiah 50 verse 45. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 45. Come on. Therefore, hear ye the counsel of the Lord uh -huh. that he hath taken against Babylon and his purposes that he hath purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Uh -huh. Surely... He shall make their inhabitation desolate with them. He shall make their habitation desolate with them. So the list of the flock is going to draw America to war. 
the list of the flock. Who's the list of the flock? Give me the book of Judges 3, verse 13. Let's see who the list of the flock is. The list of the flock. You know what? Give me Genesis 36. I like Genesis 36. Let's start from there. Genesis chapter 36, verse 8. Watch this. Genesis chapter 36, verse 8. Go ahead. Thus you know what? Esau. Start at verse 1. Read verse 1, then we're going to jump down to verse 8. Genesis chapter 36, verse 1. Go ahead. Now these are the generations of Esau. The generations Edom? of Esau. The generations of Esau who is Edom. Now read verse 8. Watch this. Verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Uh -huh. Esau is Edom. Esau is Edom because Esau took the land of Seir, like we read in Deuteronomy 2 verse 12 down. Go ahead. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites, of the Edomites in Mount Seir. You see that thing? The father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. Read verse, read verse 11 now. You know what? Read verse 10. Let's keep reading. Read verse 10. Verse 10. These are the names of Esau's sons. Mm -hmm. Eliphaz, the son of Adath, the son of Adar, the wife of Esau. Reuel, the son of Beshemath, the wife of Esau. So now Esau had Eliphaz, he had Reuel. Okay, keep going. And the sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, and Gatam, and Kenes. So now it says the sons of Eliphaz were Teman. Teman is Germany. Teman is Germany. That's what Teman is. E Teman is Germany. Teman is the wise wine out of Esau. If you look at NASA, you look at the NSA, you look at the, the, um, the you know, these, um, these science, all these science things, the, the scientific discoveries and breakthroughs and all of that, they are all coming out of Germany. Einstein was one of them. Oppenheimer. You understand? Of the, of the Manhattan Project. Germans. T-men. Okay. Read. And Timna was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son. So Timna was a... Was, well, hold, hold on. Timna was a concubine. Okay. Of Eliphaz. So keep going. And she bade to Eliphaz Amalek. Eh. These were the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. So now Amalek is the bastard child. Amalek is the bastard. Okay, give me that in Zechariah 9 and 6. Okay, Zechariah chapter 9 verse 6. So Eliphaz beget Amalek with his, with his concubine. Okay, Timna. Give me Zechariah 9 verse 6. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 6. Watch this. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 6. Go ahead. And a bastard shall dwell in Eshdod. And a what? And I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. Hold on. Read that again. Verse 6. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 6. And the bastard shall dwell in Eshdod. A bastard. It says a bastard. Hold on. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Who's the bastard? Amalek. Amalek is the bastard who is the least of the flock that is going to draw America out into war. Which war? World War Three. The war of Armageddon. You understand? And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Ashdod is modern day Tel Aviv. Modern day Tel Aviv. In Tel Aviv. The West Bank. Modern day Tel Aviv in Israel today. Okay. And I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. That goes into the Palestinians because the Palestinians in 1845, when they took over that land, you understand, they kicked the Egyptians out, the Philistines. Guess what happened? They, they took that name. That's why today they call them Palestinians. But it comes from Philistine. Okay. Go back to, uh, let's go back. Genesis 36. Genesis 36, verse 12 again. Genesis 36, verse 12. Go ahead. And Timna was concubine to Eliphaz, 
Esau's, Esau's son. And she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. Amalek, read. These were the sons of Adar. These were the sons of Adar, Esau's wife. Esau's wife. Now watch this. Give me Judges 3 verse 13. Now, what you want to understand is that it says, the least of the flock will draw them out. Remember, the least of the flock is who? Amalek is the least of the flock. Okay? That's why Amalek in Israel today, Jewish people, they call, they call it Little America. They are the ones that are going to draw America out into war. World War III. And guess what? They are the ones that are going to activate that ambassador that will be sent among the heathen. Okay? Watch this. Judges 3 verse 13. The book of Judges, chapter 3, verse 13. Go ahead. And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek, mm -hmm. and went and smote Israel, and possessed the city of palm trees. And went and possessed the city of palm trees. That's the land of Israel. Amalek always wanted our land. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 34. I believe it's 34. Let me see. Let me see. Yes. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 4. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 4. You know what? No, no. And the Lord said unto him. Wait, 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 wait. Read verse 1. We're going to jump. Come on. Deuteronomy 34 Deuteronomy verse 1. chapter 34. Moab. What verse you at? Read verse 1 again. Verse 1. And Come Moses on. went up from... Read. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo to the top of Pisgah that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan. Meaning what? He showed him the promised land. Go ahead. Verse 2. And Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah, unto the utmost sea. Read. And the south, and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, unto Zohar. The city of palm trees, that's the land of Israel. Okay, that's Jerusalem, the city of palm trees. You understand? So Amalek always wanted that land. You understand, they always wanted that land. Give me Exodus chapter 17, verse 16. Okay. They only, you know what? Hmm. Give me the book of Joel. Okay. Give me Joel 3 verse 1. Okay. I just wanted to show you the list of the flock is Amalek, which will draw America out into war. Okay. And that um, Amalek, the least of the flock, they are the ones that are going to activate that ambassador that will be sent from among the heathens. Okay, give me that in Joel 3 verse 1 now. Watch this. Joel chapter 3 verse 1. Read. Behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. That's when the Lord is going to redeem us. You understand? He's going to judge the nations that put us in slavery. Go ahead. I will also gather all the nations, gather all nations, and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. The valley of Jehoshaphat. The valley of Jehoshaphat. Keep that in mind. Go ahead. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, mm -hmm. who they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And parted my land, meaning they took our land. The Palestinians and Amalek. But today I'm not dealing with Palestinians. I'm dealing with, I'm, well, I'm dealing with Esau, I Edom, I Dumir. Okay. So the Lord, he says, he's going to gather all these nations that destroyed us. And he's going to bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. What is the valley of Jehoshaphat? Let's get the definition of the word Jehoshaphat. Get the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. I didn't take a picture of that. So uh, get that Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. Let's see what the name Jehoshaphat means. Jehoshaphat.
the definition of Jehoshaphat in the okay, Zondervan what? Compact Bible. Come on, come on. In the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, page 269. Uh, Jehoshaphat. Jehovah is judge. Jehovah is what? Jehovah is judge. So now the word Jehosh, the name Jehoshaphat means Jehovah is judge, meaning judgment. Now, read that again. Okay. Read that again in Joel chapter 3, verse 2 again. Joel chapter 3, verse 2. Go ahead. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. The value of judgment. Okay. The value of judgment. Read the judgment of the Lord that is going to bring upon the nations that put us in slavery. Go ahead. Come on. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So what I want to show you here is that you see when what we read in the book of Jeremiah, okay? The reason why I'm, I, we came to Jeremiah is because there's going to be an ambassador that will be what? That will be sent among the heathen. That ambassador will be activated by the least of the flock. That's why we are coming here. You understand? And guess what? The World War Three will begin in the so-called Middle East. Where? The value of Jehoshaphat. You understand? Because the list of the flock, Amalek will draw America out into war. World War Three. That's why we're we are going over here. Jump down to verse 11. Joel 3 verse 11 now. Watch this. Joel chapter 3 verse 11. Read. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, mm -hmm. and gather yourselves together round about. Tither. Cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. You see that thing now? Now the Lord says, he's, uh, he's gathering the nations. He says, come down. There must be a decision that must be made. The Lord will plead with the nations. He's not going to be negotiating. Mm -mm. He's going to plead with fire. Give me that in Isaiah 66. Okay. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 66, 66 verse 15. So we can understand how the Lord is going to plead with these nations, with these heathens that is gathering them. Okay, come on. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. Go ahead. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. Come on. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. Mm -hmm. To render his anger with fury. And his rebuke with flames of fire. And his rebuke with flames of fire. Watch this. Go ahead. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Mm. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Meaning them dead bodies that are going to be what? That are going to be slaughtered. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. That's how the Lord pleads with the nation. That's judgment day on that day. You understand? For the deliverance of his people. Okay. Go back to Joel 3 verse 11 again. Joel chapter 3 verse 11. Read. Assemble yourselves and come. O ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Read. Thither, cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Read. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. The valley of decision, the valley of judgment. Go ahead. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. You see what the Lord is saying? For there, because there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Jump down to verse 13. Read, keep reading, keep read verse 13. Verse 13. Put ye in the sickle, mm -hmm. for the harvest is ripe. For the harvest Come. is ripe. Hold on. It says, put ye in the sickle, because the harvest is ripe. Meaning judgment day. Go ahead. For the harvest is ripe. Read. Come, get you down. Mm -hmm. For the press is full. The wine press is full. The fats overflow. The fats overflow with the wine. Read. Their wickedness is great. 
for their wickedness is great because the wickedness of the heathens is great okay come on multitudes multitudes in the value of decision the value of what in the value of decision the value of decision is the value of jehoshaphat the value of decision is the value of jehoshaphat go ahead in the value of decision for the day of the lord is near in the value of decision for the day of the lord is near in the value of jehosh in the value of jehoshaphat the value of decision what decision what the, the decision that the lord is going to make regarding the nations that have been oppressing us from the beginning go ahead read the sun and the moon shall be darkened mm. and the stars shall with shall withdraw their shining that is the sign of war the sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining that's the sign of war give me joel 2 verse 10 joel 2 verse 10 read what you got joel chapter 2 verse 10 come on the earth shall quake before them the earth shall what the earth shall quake before them when he says the earth shall quake what's going to make the earth to quake nuclear bombs okay come on the heavens shall tremble the heavens shall tremble read the sun and the moon shall be dark mm -hmm. and the stars shall withdraw their shining war that's what he's talking about war okay let's go back let's go back go back to um no no give me the book of jeremiah 31 verse 38 now jeremiah chapter 31 verse 38 the value of decision the value of jehoshaphat because it says the list of the flock will draw them out where's the list of the flock at in the land of israel so he's telling he's giving you the location of where world war three will erupt from okay jeremiah 31 verse 38 watch this jeremiah chapter 31 verse 38 go ahead behold the days come saith the lord that the city shall be built to the lord from the tower of hananiel unto the gate of the corner so the days come said the lord that the city shall be built to the lord so what city the city of the holy city of jerusalem who's going to do this the heathens will do it if you read the book of isaiah 60 go ahead jump down to verse 40 now verse 40 mm -hmm. and the whole valley of the dead bodies and the what and the whole valley of the dead bodies the whole valley of the dead bodies the valley of jehoshaphat there's going to be dead bodies why because the lord will plead with these heathens he's going to plead with them for what they did to us read that again jeremiah chapter 31 verse, 30, verse 40 go ahead and the whole valley of the dead bodies and of the ashes and all the fields unto the brook of kidron and to the corner of the horse gate toward the east. Toward the what? Toward the east. Towards the east. That's why today they say they say so-called Middle East. No, not East Africa. In the east. You understand? That's where World War Three is going to erupt from. Okay, come on. Toward the east shall be holy unto the Lord. Read. It shall not be plucked up, nor thrown down anymore forever. Because guess what? That we will be in the land. We are going to be in the land. Amalek will not be in the land. The Palestinians will no more be in the land. But Israel. Okay? Go back to uh, Obadiah now. Let's go back there. Obadiah. Okay? Obadiah verse 1 again. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 1. Read. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Mm -hmm. You have heard a rumor from the Lord. Read. And an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. And guess what? The EU is going to turn against America. They will turn against them. Right now they are supporting them, but there will come a time where the EU will no longer support Babylon the Great. Okay? Hmm. Keep going. Verse 2. Read. Verse 2. Behold, 
I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Read that again. Obadiah, verse 2. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. So now the Lord is saying he's made, he's made Edom, because we read verse 1, it says, concerning Edom. He says, I've made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. So he says, the heathen, they despise Edom. These other heathens, they despise Edom. Thou art greatly despised. Watch this. Give me 2nd Esdras, chapter 11, verse 39. 2nd Esdras, chapter 11, verse 39. All these other heathens, the Chinese, the Japanese, okay, the, the Arabs. Oh, don't get me started on those ones. You understand? Second is chapter 11, verse 39. Read. Are not thou it that remainest of the four beasts whom I made to reign in my world, mm -hmm. that the end of their times might come through them? So now this four, he says, are you not the one that is remaineth of the four beasts? The four beasts is talking about the four beasts that was spoken to Daniel about. You understand? The four beasts meaning making reference to what? The Greeks. No, not, not, not the Greeks, but starting with what? Starting with Babylon, then Persia, okay? Then Greece, then Rome. So the fourth beast, that's Rome, but it's going beyond Rome because America is an extension of ancient Rome. Okay, read that again, verse 39. Second Ezra, chapter 11, verse 39. Read. Are not thou it that remaineth of the four beasts whom I made to reign in my world, that the end of their times might come through them? So the end of Esau's time is going to come through the fourth beast or the extension of the fourth beast. The end of their rulership is going to come through the fourth beast. The extension of the fourth beast in the last days. Give me Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 7 through 9. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 7 through 9. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 7. Read. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Read. Or when shall the end of the first, or when shall be the end of the first? And the beginning of it that followeth. So now Ezra is talking to the angel about the end of days, the last days. You understand? Come on. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born, were born of him. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Read. For Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. You see what he's saying? For Esau, because Esau is the end of the world, meaning their birth signifies the end of days. Because Esau came out first and Jacob was holding the heel of his brother Esau. Refer making reference to what? That they are, the way they were born, it was a similitude of how things are going to part asunder in the last days. Because the end of Esau's rule is going to come to an end. And Jacob will be the ruling empire forever. You understand? Read that again, verse 9. Second is chapter 6, verse 9. Come on. For Esau is the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Jacob is the beginning of it. The empire that's going to rule. That's going to follow. Okay. Give me Obadiah, verse 21. Obadiah, verse 21. Obadiah, the last verse. He's saying the same thing here. Okay, come on. The book of Obadiah, verse 21. Read. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. To do what? And the, to judge the Mount of Esau. Meaning Esau's judgment, great future judgments. The saviors shall come up on Mount Zion, Israel. To judge the Mount of Esau, meaning what? The nation of Esau, the nation of Esau, Edom, Idumia. Read. To judge the mouths of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. That's the same thing we read in 2nd Esdras, 
okay when it says for esau is the end of the world and jacob is the beginning of it that followeth go back to second Ezra now 11 verse 40 so the reason why these heathens the rest of these heathens they greatly despise edom is because of what is because of how they run in the earth they are wreaking havoc on this earth you understand they can't do nothing because what because america has great military might they've got nuclear weapons the type of weaponry that Esau has, no nation has it on this earth. You understand? Look at their military budget. That says a lot. Okay? Read that. 2 Ezra 11 verse 40. 2 Ezra 11 verse 40. Read. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past and had power over the world with great fearfulness. You see that part right there? And it great had and it had power over the world with great fearfulness. They have powerful influence over the whole earth, and they rule with great fearfulness. They put the nations in fear. That's why they are greatly despised. Go ahead, because one nation cannot go against them. So that's why it says, "Let us," meaning all of us, let's come together and destroy this beast. Go ahead. And over the whole campus of the earth, with over much wicked whole. oppression. He says, over the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression. So he's not talking about Rome because Rome wasn't ruling over the whole compass of the earth. There wasn't. Because think about it. When you read 2nd Ezra, read 2nd Ezra 13. Just to prove that, 2nd Ezra 13 and verse 45. This is when Northern Kingdom went to the Americas. Okay, watch this. Verse 45, read that. Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 45. Come on. For through that country, there was a great way to go, namely over a year and a half. Uh -huh. And the same region is called Azareth. The Azareth is, is a biblical name for what is known as America today. Because America today is named after Amerigo Vespucci. But the biblical name for that land is Azareth. Jump up to verse 41. Watch this. Verse 41, but they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. You see that part right there? Where never mankind dwelt. So Rome wasn't ruling because Rome didn't know about that. It, didn't, it did not know about that part of the earth. They did not. That's why our forefathers, when they went over there, it says where never mankind dwelt. There was nobody there when they got there. So obviously this is not talking about Rome. So go back to 2 Ezra 11, verse 40 again. 2 Ezra chapter 11, verse 40. Read. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past. Read. And had, and had power over the world with great fearfulness and over the whole compass of the earth which much, with much wicked oppression. Read. And so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit. You see that thing? So the reason why they want to rise up against in battle says they are greatly despised is because of what we're reading here. They have power over the whole world with great fearfulness. They have a powerful influence over the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression. Much, much. So long time dwelt he upon earth with deceit because nobody knows that america is babylon the great okay watch this give me isaiah 14 verse 4 isaiah chapter 14 verse 4 the reason why they are greatly despised is because they rule the earth with much wicked oppression america controls the whole earth they have influence over all nations on earth it doesn't matter whether it's china whether it's north korea america has influence over there that's what the bible is saying Okay, Isaiah 14, verse 4. Read that. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 4. Read. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Against the say, king of Babylon. Hold on. He says, you shall take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. The king of Babylon, who's that? The United States of America. He is the king of Babylon. Go ahead. And say, how had the oppressor ceased? How had the what? 
how had the oppressor ceased? How had the how 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 was this oppressor able to be brought down to their knees? Because remember, it says he ruled the earth with much weaker oppression. So it says, how had the oppressor ceased? How did his rulership end? Go ahead. The golden city ceased. The golden city, because everybody wants to go over there. You understand? They are the ones that are giving money to other countries. IMF, foreign aid, and those foreign aid, they go with policy. Okay, read. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked. The Lord has broken the staff. The staff pillar is a the staff is a, is 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 a, is a, um is a stick that is used by kings. You understand? Because that's why it says the king of Babylon. Now verse five says the Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the rulership of the wicked. Go ahead. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, and the scepter of the rulers. The scepter of the rulers. He's the king of all the rulers of the earth. Because if you look at the UN, who controls that? America does it. Yes, it's the United Nations is all different nations coming together and all that, blah, blah, blah. But America tells them what to do. You understand? I remember there was one time when, I don't know which country it was in the UN, and they didn't support America. And this woman, she was a congresswoman, a white woman, an Edomite. She said, those that did not support us, they are going to suffer the consequences. What does that mean? We're not going to give you foreign aid. We'll put sanctions and embargoes on you. And we're going to starve your country out. You see that thing? Much wicked oppression. Okay, read. He who smote the people in wrath with the continual stroke. He smites the people, he smites the nations with wrath. With a continual stroke. He makes sure that, listen, whatever, if you don't do what they say, they will destroy you. I mean, look at the nation, look at, look at the continent of Africa. We are poor, yet we have everything. Look at North America, look at Central, look at South, poor. Okay, why? Because if we don't do what they say, guess what they do? They create chaos in those countries. They send economic hitmen. you understand? If the, if the president does not uh, comply, guess what they do? They take you out. You understand? If you don't go, or, or they cause a civil unrest in your country to overthrow the government. If that doesn't work, they take you out. Look at what happened to uh, Jovenel Moïse, the president of Haiti. You don't want vaccines? Okay, don't worry. Guess where, where, where is he now? Six feet under. You understand? Read. Verse 6 again. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 6. Read. He who smote the people in wrath with the continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger uh -huh. is persecuted. It says, he that ruled, ruled the nations in anger. They rule the nations in anger. They appear like a lamb, but they speak like a dragon. You understand? Read is what? He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted. Destroyed. And, Read. And none hinders. And none hinder us. Jump down to verse 12 now. Watch this. Verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, mm -hmm. son of the morning? Son of the morning, meaning what? Son of the morning, meaning what? They say they, um, they are the wise ones. You understand? Come to me if you want to learn anything. Come to me. You understand? Son of the morning. Read. Light How better. art thou... Meaning he is a light bearer to the nations. You ever seen the Statue of Liberty? The Statue of Liberty has the seven, has the seven pointed uh, points out of his head, representing the seven heads of the dragon. You understand? And that woman is holding a torch. Light bearer. If you want to learn anything, come to me. You understand? The angel of light. Satan, even Satan himself, will present himself as the angel of light. I'm paraphrasing it. Keep going. How art thou cut down to the ground? Read. Which did us weaken the nations. You see that thing? Which did weaken the nations. You see verse 4, he started calling him the king of Babylon. Then he says the oppressor. Then verse 5 says the, the wicked. You understand? Then verse 13, I mean verse 12 says, is Lucifer. Because Lucifer is a man. Okay? He is a man. 
So it says, Lucifer is weakening the nations. How? Give me the book of Daniel 8.25. Let me show you how Lucifer, this white man, is weakening the nations. You know what? Before we go there, jump down to verse 16 so we know that Lucifer will prove that Lucifer is a man. Verse 16. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 16. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee they that and consider what? thee. They that see thee. They that see thee. They that see Lucifer. How are they going to see Lucifer? If Lucifer is a puff of smoke, like that Greek mythology, Hercules and Zeus, if Lucifer is a puff of smoke, it says, they that see thee. They that see Lucifer are going to narrowly look upon him. Go ahead. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee uh -huh. and consider thee, saying, really? Is this the man? Is this the what? Is this the man? Is this the what? Is this the man? The man. Is this the man? Lucifer is a man on earth. Lucifer is a man on which man? The white man, Esau Edom Idumia. He is that man that is weakening the nations. You understand? That is destroying this nation with a continual stroke, and nobody knows who he is. Who's going to reveal him? The prophets will do it. Read that again, verse 16. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 16. Go ahead. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. Uh -huh. And consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? Uh -huh. That did shake kingdoms? You see that thing? they making the earth to tremble because what? They rule the earth with much wicked oppression. They rule with fearfulness. You understand? And they are shaking these kingdoms. Watch this. Give me Daniel 8.25. Okay? Which did weaken the nation. How do they weaken the nation? Watch this. Daniel chapter 8 verse 25. Daniel chapter 8, verse 25. Go ahead. And through his policy. Through his what? And through his policy. Through his policy. America's foreign policy. America's foreign policy. The way they run the nations, if you don't comply, like for instance, South Africa was the third country in the world to legalize um, gay relations, same-sex relations. They were the third country to do it. That's why we see South Africa, the, the, the countries in, in Africa, they flock here. Why? Because America is supporting them financially. They give them foreign aid and so forth. Why? Because we agree with America's policy. The other countries like Nigeria, they don't agree. So that's why there's terrorism going on in there. Why? Because they want the oil. And they say, if you want us to help you with Boko Haram, guess what you must do? You have to accept same-sex relations. So when they say no, they say, okay, we're going to turn it up to cause civil unrest. You understand? That's how they rule. That's how they do things. Look at Haiti. Look at Venezuela. Okay? Venezuela people are eating out of garbage cans. Look at Libya. What they did. When Gaddafi was taking care of the people, they destroyed that man before the whole earth so that any African country, that every African lead, whatever African leader wants to do something similar, they say, remember Gaddafi's example? If you, can, if you want to do that, we'll come for you. That's how they do it. Okay, read that verse again. Daniel chapter 8, verse 25. Go ahead. And through his policy also, he shall cause... He shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. Craft, meaning deceit. He shall cause deceit to prosper in his hand. Go ahead. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. Because he's prideful. He will magnify himself in his heart because they've got too much pride, because they've got too much power. Go ahead. And by peace shall destroy many. And by peace shall destroy many. What does that mean? By peace shall destroy men. Because they'll be saying, we need to restore peace in the Middle East, in Iraq, in Iran, in Libya, okay? So on and so forth. But their peacekeeping missions, you know what they are doing? They act as the saviors. But they are the same people that are causing problems in those countries. Because they want the resources upon the land. So what do they do? They create chaos 
civil unrest. And then when there's wars going on in those countries, guess what they do? They go over there as the saviors. By peace, they shall destroy these many countries. That's why these countries are desolate now. Because of what? America's foreign policy. How they deal with these other nations. You understand? Read. And by peace shall destroy many. Read. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. That's Christ. But he shall be broken without, without hand. That's what we read in Isaiah 63. Watch this. I'm going to give an example because America is the extension. Babylon the Great. America, which is in the Bible, is called Babylon the Great. The Great Hall on this earth. Is an extension of ancient Rome. Let me show you how Rome did things. Give me First Maccabees 8 verse 1. This is how Rome did things. You understand? Watch this. You know what? Yeah, yeah. Read Romans 8 verse 1. We're going to jump down to verse 4. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. No, no. No, I'm sorry. First Maccabees. First Maccabees 8 and 1. I'm, I'm looking at the word Romans because, you know, the Romans was ruling during this time. Watch this. The under the Roman Republic. Okay, read that. First Maccabees, chapter 8, verse 1. Go ahead. Now Judas had heard of the fame of the Romans. Read. That they were mighty and valiant men, and such as would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them. You see that part right and there? It says that they were mighty and valiant men. This is Judah Maccabee now. And such as would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them. Meaning what? Those that joined themselves to Rome, Rome will love that. America does the same thing. If you don't resist, they, you are going to be an ally. Okay? Read. And the other nations are not going to mess with you because America is, you, you, have, you, America, you are an allied country with America. That's the point. Rome was doing the same thing. Go ahead. And make a league of amity with all that came unto them. You see that thing? They kept friendships. And the league of amity, that's friendships. You understand? Jump down to verse 4. Verse 4. And that by their policy. By their what? And, and that by their policy. By their policy. So Rome's foreign policy, how they deal with other nations. America does the same thing today. And by their policy. Go ahead. And by their policy and patience, they had conquered all the place. You see that thing? Conquering. They were conquering all the nations. Read. Though it were very far from them. Though it were very far from them. Meaning what? Look today, look at our government symbols in South Africa. It's got the eagle. It's letting you know we are what? We are a colonial state and we pay colonial tax. For us to be a colony under what? Under Britain and America. You understand? It says, and though it were very far from them. We are far from Europe. But guess what? We are far from America. But guess what? Even though our government symbol is got the eagle. Hmm. Read on. Though it were far from them. And the kings also that came against them from the uttermost part of the earth. So they had discomforted them. Meaning destroyed them. Meaning those that were op in opposition, Rome destroyed them. America does the same thing today. Go ahead. Till they discomforted them and given them a great overthrow. So that the rest did give them tribute every year. So you're on mute. Um, I remember during when it says and given them a great overthrow, meaning they, were, they, they overthrew these countries, these nations that did not agree with Rome's foreign policy. America does the same thing today. There's a show on Netflix called a De The Designated Survivor. You must watch that show. It's a very interesting show because it shows you how America deals with these nations if they don't comply. You understand? And when you watch the show, when you don't look at it with spiritual eyes, you would think that these other nations that do not want to comply, they are wrong. No, they are not wrong. Because I remember the president, 
which was played by Keitha, I think Kifa Sutherland or something. He went to the he went to Iraq. I think it's Iraq or Iran. He got there and he wanted them to put down their arms, meaning what? They must not have nuclear weapons and all that. And the 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 the, the minister said to him, listen, but you are my guest in my country. Why are you telling me what to do? Because I don't come to America and tell you what to do. Why do you think you can come here and tell me what to do? And the president was saying, listen, we're giving you six, uh, what? I think it was uh, three days to shut down the weapon development systems and all of that, or they're going to see the wrath of America. That's what the president said, because that's how they deal with these countries. Fear and intimidation. You understand? Rome was doing the same thing. America adopted the same system of Rome because they are the same people. Now, 1 Maccabees 8 verse 13. Watch this. 1 Maccabees chapter 8 you know verse 13. Start of verse 12. Read verse 12. 1 Maccabees chapter 8 verse 12. But with their friends and such as relied upon them. You know what? I'm they... sorry. I'm sorry. Start of verse 11. Let's start with verse 11. We're going to read that. 1 Maccabees chapter 8, verse 11. Read. It was told him besides uh -huh. how they destroyed and brought under their dominion all other kingdoms and isles that at any time resisted them. So now the, the one, those that resisted them, that those that resisted Rome, they were brought under their dominion. You understand? Through their policy, they sent economic hitmen. Like I was mentioning, you understand? They cause civil unrest in the country. They devalue your currency. They put embargoes where you cannot trade with other countries until the country starves, until you surrender. And if you don't, guess what? Eventually, the people are going to revolt and eventually you are going to be overthrown. They will put a puppet that they want to do their will. Rome is doing that. America is doing the same thing. Go ahead. But with their friends, with their and friends, said, but with those that agreed with America's policy, like South Africa. I mean, you ever seen the way Cyril Ramaphosa speaks? You can see it's like he's a puppet. He's just being controlled. You understand? America is controlling the way he's, you see the way he speaks? You can see like, you know what? It's like he's been controlled with the remote. The things he says, he's got a script. On what he must say. You can see even the way he's governing, you can see he is not himself. You understand? He's under duress. The, 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 the big arm of the great beast, which is America, has him, is controlling him. You understand? Read that thing again, verse 12. First Maccabees chapter 8, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Also that. Verse 12, but with their friends and such as relied upon them, they kept amity. Read. And that they had conquered kingdoms both far and nigh. Mm -hmm. in, so much, in so much as all that heard of their name were afraid of them. You see, isn't that the same thing happening today with America? Whenever you hear United States of America being mentioned, the, it's like, you know that movie, The Lion King, when they were mentioning Mufasa? Mufasa, Mufasa. And you know, you know, those hyenas were shaking. That's exactly what we're reading here. Okay, come on. Verse 13. Verse 13. Read. Also that whom they would, whom they would help to a kingdom, those reigned. Stop right there. And, who... says, and also, hold on. And also that whom they would help to a kingdom, those reigned. So you look at all these puppet kings, like your Ramaphosas, those these are puppet kings. You understand? Because if America, Europe wants you to rule, you will rule. You'll become the president in that country. If you don't comply, they will show you where to get off. You understand? They will destroy you. Okay? Look at Chavez in Venezuela. He was supplying low-cost oil to the community in Venezuela. What did they do to him? He got a brain aneurysm and he dropped dead. They killed him. And he was taking care of the, the people in Venezuela. America didn't like that because they wanted the oil. Now, if you look at the resources that are in Haiti, because I was reading about it, they've got tons and tons of oil reserves, reserves 
in the ground. Because I was wondering, like, it cannot just be about the vaccine. There's something deeper than that. The oil is because the article says in Venezuela, the, level, the oil that the oil reserves that are there is like um, a small pond compared to in Haiti. In Haiti, it says is a pool. So which means in Haiti, the oil underground is more. That's why you see how, how poor Haiti is. Haiti is one of the poorest countries. You understand? But they've got the, one, of the, one of the largest oil reserves underground. Because ESO is still squeezing them until they surrender. If they agree, you're gonna see, you're gonna start to see things happening. You understand? Because look at how South Africa is. You see how South Africa is developing Cape Town, Santen, you understand, Midrand, wherever there's all Pretoria, there's all these developments going on. Why? Because they made a deal with the devil, the white man, America, the scepter of the rulers of the earth. The great Satan. That's what the Middle East, that's what the, uh, the, the, the Palestinian calls America. The great Satan. He is the great Satan. Okay. I'm sorry. Let me catch my, let me come back. Read verse 13 again. First Maccabees, chapter 8, verse 13. Go ahead. Also that whom they would help to a kingdom, those reign. Uh -huh. And whom again they would, they displace. You see that thing they displace. How? How did they displace them? They set up, they put up, they activate embargoes and sanctions. You can't sell, you can't trade, you can't do nothing with no country until you surrender. Rome was doing that. This is Rome, by the way. This is under the Roman Republic. So could you imagine? Because now you see the same system that Rome was using is the same system that America is using today. You understand? Is as whom they did not like that didn't agree with them is that they displaced. Finally, that they were greatly exalted. Is America not exalted? Yes, it is. That's why they've got so much pride right now. Okay, but judgment is coming. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back to Second Ezra, chapter eleven, verse forty-one. Now, Second Ezra, chapter eleven, verse forty-one. Come on. For the, for the earth, hast thou not judged with truth? You see that thing? America does not judge the earth with truth. They don't. They don't judge the earth with truth because the truth, what is the truth? Give me that in Psalms 119 verse 142. They don't judge the earth with truth. They don't. Watch this. Psalms chapter 119 verse 142. Come on. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, uh -huh. and thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. So the laws of God, they don't judge the earth with the law. They don't judge justly on this earth. You understand? So go back, 2nd Ezra 11, verse 41. 2nd Ezra chapter 11, verse 41. Read. Really? For the earth, thou was not judged with truth. Because the earth, right now, he is ruling the earth right now. Give me Job 9.24. He is ruling the earth. Okay, Job chapter 9 verse 24. For the earth has not, has, thou has not judged with truth. Because they rule the earth with great fearfulness. Okay, Job 9.24. Read that. Job chapter 9 verse 24. Come on. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Do you see that? Because that's what we read in Isaiah 14. The scepter of the wicked. Okay. Read. He covereth the faces of the judges. Mm -hmm. the, he covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? If it's not the white man that is, that, that is ruling the whole earth, who's doing it? Which nation is ruling the whole earth? Nobody. It's not the Arabs. It's not the Chinese. Okay. It's not the Hamites is the white man. He's the one. He says, the earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. He is the wicked of the earth. And he's ruling the whole earth. He's not judging the earth righteously. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. We are the judges of the earth. He covered our faces. They whitewashed all our history. Now nobody remembers who we are. Okay? 
If not, where and who is it? Job is asking, if it's not this man, then who is it? You understand? Give me Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 4. Go ahead. Therefore, the law is slack. The law is slack. Read. And judgment doth never go forth. Mm -hmm. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. The wicked is Before. compassing the righteous. Is as because the wicked doth compass the, about the righteous. So the wicked, who's the wicked? The white man, he is the wicked of the earth. Read that again for the what? For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Read. Therefore, wrong, ju wrong judgment proceeded. You see that thing? Therefore, wrong judgment proceeded. That's why it says, go back to 2nd Ezra 11, verse 41. That's why Ezra said what he said. Same thing that Habakkuk is saying. 2nd Ezra chapter 11, verse 41. Read. For the earth that hast thou not judged with truth, for the earth has thou not has thou not judged with truth. Why? Because wrong judgment goeth out. You understand? Wrong judgment proceedeth. Watch this. Go back to Obadiah now. Obadiah. Obadiah verse 2 again. Obadiah verse 2. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Thou art greatly despised. Why are, they de why are they greatly despised? All those precepts that we went over is the reason why they are greatly despised. Because why? They are destroying the whole earth. All the nations, they are ruling them with great fearfulness. Mainly us. You understand? First and foremost. And the rest of everyone else. Watch this. Read verse 3 now. Come on. Verse 3. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Mm-hmm. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Look at the pride. It says, the pride, the pride of thine heart has deceived thee. He is so proud that, listen, his pride is deceiving him. You understand? He's, in his mind, he doesn't think he's going to be overthrown. He doesn't think he's going to be shut down. He doesn't think he's going to be what? He's going to be... This rulership is going to come to an end. You know, although he reads it, but he don't believe it because of what? His pride is too much. Watch this. Give me Psalms chapter 1. I mean, Psalms 10 verse 1. Psalms chapter 10 verse 1. Psalms chapter 10 verse 1. This is King David speaking. Watch this. Psalms chapter 10 verse 1. Come on. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Mm -hmm. why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble so now David is asking the Lord he says why stand thou afar off O Lord why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble because as a people we are in deep trouble you understand we are under persecution the nations are destroying us they are oppressing us they are making sure that our necks are always under persecution and they like it so so that's why David is complaining to the Lord he's crying to the Mosa. go ahead the wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. I need you to put some power in your reading. Read verse 2 again. Psalm chapter 10, verse 2. The wicked in his pride, in his pride doth persecute the poor. Read. Let them be taken in the desire in the devices that they have imagined. You see what David is saying? He says, The wicked in his pride. That's the same thing we read in Obadiah. He says, The pride of thine heart has deceived thee. So it says, the wicked in his pride does persecute the poor. Give me Malachi 1 verse 4. Okay, Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. The wicked in his pride. Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Read. Whereas Edom saith, mm -hmm. we are impoverished. We are impoverished. But this is during, hold on. It says, Edom saith, meaning the white man, Esau, Edom, Idumia, Today, call, they call themselves the Europeans and Americans and Dutch, British, the French. It says, where, whereas Edom saith, Afrikaners, I cannot, how can I forget those ones? Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished. When were they impoverished? During the Dark Ages. When Rome fell in 193 AD. 
it was the beginning of the period that is called the Dark Ages or the Middle Ages. Okay, that's when they were impoverished. Read. But we will return and build the desolate places. But they will, they say, we will return. When did they return? During the Renaissance. That's when they returned. In 1453, during the Renaissance, that's when they returned. Read on. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will uh -huh. throw down. Come on. And they shall call them the board of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. He says, they shall call Edom the border of wickedness, meaning they are the wicked. What is a border? A border is the beginning and end of something. So they are the beginning and end of all wickedness on earth. And the people, not the person, the people, meaning the nation against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. So what we're reading here when it says the people, that's what we read in... That's why they're going to get that great future judgment that we read in the Zondervan. Yes, they are the wicked of the earth, okay? And they are hiding it so that nobody knows it, okay? Go back to Psalms now. Chapter 10, verse 2 again. Psalms chapter 10, verse 2. The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. The white man, hold on, the white man, because the wicked is Esau, Edom, Idumia. The white man in his pride does what? Does persecute the poor. They persecute the poor. Give me the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, so we know who the poor is, that this white man is persecuting. Isaiah chapter 14, the last verse. Isaiah 14, verse 32. Go ahead. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? Mm -hmm. That the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. You see who the poor of the, the poor is? The poor is Zion, Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, the so-called blacks, Bantus, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. We are the poor. Okay, go back. Psalms 10, verse 2. Psalms chapter 10, verse 2. Read. Right? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Mm -hmm. Let them be taken in the, in the devices that they have imagined. So now David is saying they must be taken in the, the schemes, the plans, the traps that they have imagined against us, the poor. Go ahead. For the wicked boasted of his heart's desire. You see that thing? Because of that pride. For the wicked boasted of his heart's desire how they conquered the nations. I mean, if you, if, if you just watch the news, the documentaries, they show you World War I, World War II. You understand? How they conquered, how they, the French-American War. They, listen, they show you, they, when it comes to their history, they will show you Napoleon. They will, they will show, that's their pride. They are boasting. And they use the media to do it. Go ahead. For the wicked boasted of its heart's desire, Read. And blessed the covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. You see what the, you see you see what the Lord is saying is saying they bless the covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. So these nations that are covetous, the ones that are in bed with America, they are covetous. The Lord says He hates them, but America loves them. You understand? Read. Verse four. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. Mm -hmm. God, is not, God is not in all his thoughts. You see what he's saying? The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. He don't care about the Mosa. He don't care. Go ahead. His ways are always grievous. Mm. Thy judgments are far above, are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffed at them. So the, you, see, you see what he said? That's why he says, thou art greatly despised in Obadiah. You understand? Thou art greatly despised. He says, he's both, he puffed at them. Hmm. Read. Verse 6. Come on. Verse 6. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. Meaning nobody's going to bring me down. Nobody's going to stop me. That's what he's saying. 
He said in his heart, I shall not be moved. Nobody who's will bring me down to the ground. That's what we read in Obadiah. He's saying the same thing here. Come on. I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. Meaning what? I'm not going to be destroyed. I'm going to be a lady forever. Read. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and mm. fraud. Mm, mm, mm. And, Read. And his tongue is mischief and vanity. That's, you see, he says his mouth is full of cursing. What is his mouth? The media. The media. I'm giving an example of, look at the Zondo Commission. Every now and again, you see our brothers, our brothers and sisters up on the stand being interrogated. And ENCA is the main culprit that is pushing this out. Because you, why, why, would you, why do you think media houses like ENCA, uh, Media 24, News 24, uh, what's the, uh, SABC, they're also doing it. Why do you think they are going through so much land to be broadcasting these things? You know what they are doing? They are trying to get the attention off of them. Because they are the thief of the earth. I'm getting to that. You understand? So they are using the media to keep people, to keep, to keep the people entertained and focus on the media, the stuff that's going on with the Zondo Commission. Hey, Zuma, this, hey, Rama, not Ramaphosa, because he is the coon. He's writing that coon train. Rama, uh, Jacob Zuma, Ace Mahashule, they just be blasting them on the media. Why? is to, because they know the public, they saw black people, they know black people don't read. We don't read. We don't know what's going on. Like, I mean, what was, what was the guy's name? I think it was, there was a show on SABC2. I think the, the Great Debate, right? That's the show, right? Hello? Sir, is it they the use a show like that. Uh, is, is, it, call, is, it, is it the Great Debate? Is the Great Debate yes, or sir. the Debate? Yes. So that show, uh, that show, there was a day when they were talking about racism, I think. And there was a guy, uh, Clayton McKenzie. That's his name, right? Is it Clayton McKenzie? Uh, he, can he, he will forgive me if I'm pronouncing his name wrong. And he was talking about, because I think he wrote a book. And they were talking about, hey, no, the state capture and the state capture this. And he gave a simple analogy. He was like, you know, Jacob Zuma is like a petty thief. And he went on to explain that, you know, people like Oppenheimers, the Rupets, those are the prop, those are the actual criminals. So, you know, what? you know, I thought about that. I'm like, you know what? He is actually right. If you look at what they are, because I mean, you really think about it, it's like, if you have to compare, give me the book of our Psalms. I know I'm jumping ahead, but there's something that King David said, okay? I'm going to show you, you see, this white man, he is the devil the Bible speaks of. Watch this. Give me Psalms 58 and verse 2. Watch this. I'm going to show you what, what Clayton McKenzie, you will forgive me for, somebody look up his name. Is it Clayton McKenzie? So I don't pronounce Gaten, his name sir. wrong. What? Gayton. Gayton. Oh, Gayton. Gay, I'm, yeah, Gayton McKenzie. Thank you. Gayton McKenzie. Okay, continue. Read that. Psalm chapter 58, verse 2. Read. Yea, in heart you work wickedness. Uh -huh. You weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. You see what David is saying? He says, weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. You see, the violence that this white man has done on this earth cannot be compared to anybody. He tops them. That's why the scriptures are saying, weigh, he says, you weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. So the violence that you see upon this earth, there's only one nation of people that's doing it. That's the white man. Esau, Edom, Idumia, also known as the white man. You understand? The Caucasian race. So Gaten McKenzie was saying, the, he, was, and he was talking at low level. He was talking about uh, the Ruperts, the Oppenheimers, the, what's the other one? What's the other rich families and all that? That's um, close. That's child. Not no, 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 no. In South Africa. Rasp Yo, what? Naspers. Yes, yes. Nespers, the Nespers group. So he was talking about that. 
So he was saying, those are the real criminals now. And he was 100% correct. You understand? He was 100% correct. So people be focusing on the Zondo Commission, the state capture, this, this. Listen, that's, those are petty thieves. It's like you comparing the, the theft, the violence, the destruction, the rape, the robbery, and the murder that the white man has done upon this earth. You compare the stuff that he's done, which has never been called to account for all those crimes, versus Uchavlani stealing sneakers from Komolo. I mean, think about it. It's the same thing. It's like you're comparing Javulani stealing sneakers versus what the white man has done. That's what this state capture Zondo commission who Zuma, that is, I compare what Zuma has done to Javulani stealing sneakers That's the comparison. But you cannot compare what this white man has done on this earth. You cannot. You understand? Go back to Psalms chapter 10. Psalms 10 verse 7. Read that thing again. Psalms chapter 10 verse 7. Go ahead. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. You see that under his tongue because his mouth is the media. The mouth that he is using is the media. You understand? He has the power of the media behind him. This white man was given a great mouth. Give me that in Revelation chapter 13. This, I'm telling you right now, this class is going to be long. So just you stay tuned. Revelation 13, verse 6. Watch this. You know what? Start of verse 5. This white man was given a big mouth. That mouth, he uses it to the fullest. Okay? Read that. Revelation chapter 13, verse 5. Read. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. You see that thing? That's the same thing that David is saying. You understand? It says his mouth is full of cursing. Who is he cursing? Our people. He's, he's calling us baboons. He's calling us gorillas. He's calling, he's calling us monkeys. You understand? Wetbacks. That's what they call kafirs. That niggas. That's what they call us. You understand? His mouth is full of cursing. Okay? Speaking great words and what? Great things and blasphemies. Read. And, and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. To continue 40 and two months, meaning what? 350 years. This, this, the Moses has given this man an extra time to rule. Go ahead. Verse 6. Verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. You see that part right there? And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. How does he do that? opening his mouth, blasphemy against God. He says, no, God is white. He says, he says, Jesus Christ is white. He says, the Israelites are white. Read. To blaspheme his name. To blaspheme his name, because now they stole that name, the name of Israel. Read. And his tabernacle. And his tabernacle. And then, Give me Ezekiel. Hold on. Ezekiel 35 verse 12. And his tabernacle. Let's deal with that. He says to blaspheme his name. Revelation 2 verse 9 real quick. I was not planning to come here, but let's just explain it real quickly. Revelation 2 verse 9. To Revelation chapter 2. Come on. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. Read. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. Read. But thou art rich. Uh -huh. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but of the synagogue of Satan. That's how they blaspheme his name, because guess what? Now, those white bastards in our land, Amalek, you understand? Jewish people, which were the Khazars from Poland and all that, they are the ones that, are, that's how they blaspheme the name of the Lord. They blaspheme his name. You understand? And it says, and his tabernacle, give me Ezekiel 35, verse 12. Ezekiel chapter 35. Oh, wait. Ezekiel chapter 35 verse 12. Read. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And that I have heard all thy blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel. The mountains of Israel. That's his tabernacle. 
The mountains of Israel, that is tabernacle. The mountains of Israel is the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. Saying, they are laid desolate. Uh -huh. They are given us to consume. You see what they said in their hearts? So the reason why they do the things they do to us is they say like, they are given to us to consume. That's the reasoning behind the actions they do to us and our people, our sons and our daughters. Okay. But this man was given a great, a big mouth. This great mouth, he uses it to the fullest. Give me that in First Esdras, chapter 5, verse 73. 1 Esdras, chapter 5, verse 73. And by great, and by their secret plots, Read. and popular persuasions and commotions, and they what? hindered the, and popular persuasions and commotions. Popular persuasions, that's the media. Popular persuasions today is their media outlets. Social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, the news, newspapers, so on and so forth, right? They hindered the finishing of the building all the time of king, of that king, Cyrus lived. So they were hindered from building for the space of two years until the reign of Darius. Read our verse again. I'm sorry. Verse 73 again. Second is first is chapter five, verse 73. And by their secret plots and popular persuasions and commotions, they hindered the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. So they were so they were hindered from building for the space of two years until the reign of Darius. So what I want to show you is that it says by their secret plots. So it's always in secret. It's covert. You understand? It's not overt, it's covert. So it's always in secret. Because the way they push it out, you ever, you, ever, you ever ask yourself, whenever you look at the freedom fighters in South Africa, right? You will see our fathers and our mothers that were in the struggle, right? And then you see white people in there also. That says, no, they also fought for the struggle. And I used to ask myself, well, how? How did these white people fight for the struggle when they were the ones that was oppressing us during apartheid. How did they fight for the struggle? You know, I used to ask myself that. And then I thought about it. You know, I was like, because I was reading an article not so long ago, right? And this guy, I forgot his name now. Ish, ish, let me see if I can find that article. Give me one second. Um, let me see. I think it, it came out yesterday, I think. I think it was yesterday. Let me see. If I refresh, maybe it might pop up. Um, this guy, he was, um, he was talking about the thing that he did. Um, it was a white guy, okay? He was a minister of parliament, I think, for 25 years or something, or 20 years in parliament, okay? He said he fought for the struggle. And he was the one that um that delivered evidence to the zondo commission okay he's the one that delivered evidence to the zondo commission and he met with praveen godan in the uk i think the uk or america somewhere there i forgot his name for the article i can't find it now and he's the one that brought the evidence to the zondo commission in order for them to break the case on zuma that's the reason why they be in the midst saying, no, we fought for the struggle. No, they were not fighting for the struggle. No, no. They were not fighting for the struggle. They are the ones that are going to ENCA, all these media outlets, news, news media houses, to give them this information. They are the ones that are doing it. There's no such thing that they fought for the They fought for the struggle. They did not fight for the struggle. You understand? That's why he says, read that thing again in First Esdras. 5 verse 73. Read again. First Israel chapter 5 verse 73. Go ahead. And by their secret plots 
and popular persuasions and commotions. Uh -huh. They hindered the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. Stop right there. You see the, you see the point? They hindered the finishing of the building. That's the whole point of this. Hindering the finishing of the building. That's the point. That's why it says their secret plot. How? Because they're not going to stop the, the movement. This is wisdom is a movement, so they won't stop that. But it's not going to stop them from trying. You see, Izo is a dreamer. Okay? He's a dreamer. That's why he's put all these movies out. He's always winning. But when you read the scriptures, reality, he's not going to win nothing. What I'm trying to show you is I'm going back to the Zondo Commission. The state capture garbage. All of that is just to deceive the hearts of the simple. To, to take attention from themselves. So that nobody talks up. Because when you speak, when you hear all these other political parties, like your EFF be talking about the land, the land, it's like they make it seem like they're crazy. But they're not crazy. The only thing they don't understand is that they're not going to get the land until the Lord returns. But the point is, what they are saying, they are not crazy. They are speaking facts. You understand? Hmm. Where was we at? We were in Psalms, right? Go back to Psalms 10. That's where we were, isn't it? Yes, sir. No, no, we talk about the big mouth. Yes, in Revelation. Revelation. You were given the big mouth. Okay, I understand now. Go back to Psalms 10, verse 7. Psalms chapter 10, verse 7. Go ahead. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Read. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. That's what you see on the news now when it comes to us. Read. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. Mm -hmm. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. You see that part right his there? He said he seated in the lurking places of the villages, wherever we are. I mean, think about it. In, come to the log chain, because that's where we are. Just look at the malls they are building. So when you look at these malls they are building, you think, no, is, this is for your benefit. No, 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 it's not for your benefit. They want to keep you in this, in this hell hole that we're in. So, I mean, think about it. You would think... With all the billions that they have to build these malls in the locations where there is no even listen, the, the communities are poor, they're living in cuckoos. You think that you mean to tell me they cannot take all that money because they stole all of it? They never work for nothing. All that money they had, they stole it. It's not theirs, they are sitting on stolen land. That's why they are in everybody's, they're in everybody's land. So there's military bases all around the world. Why? Because they are sitting on stolen land. That's why they have to have security all over the planet earth in every country that's why that's how a thief behaves because he's always worried about the owners of the stuff he stole he's always worried about that that's why they have all these military bases around the world you see what i'm saying to keep the nations that they stole from from questioning them that's why they do it keep going His eyes are privily set against the poor. His eyes are privily set against the poor. So you mean to tell me all these billions of rents they have, they can't transform the community and build new houses? They won't do it. So these malls are not about us. They are making merchandise of us because they know we just consume stuff. You understand? Read. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. Read. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. To catch us. Doth, the poor is Israel. To catch Israel. Read. He doth catch the poor. He catch when the poor. He draweth, when he draweth him into his net. When he says he catch the poor, he does catch the poor, meaning he does. It says when he draweth him into his net. How does he do it? The media, politics, religion. Why Jesus? You understand that? That's what they do. Come on. Verse sin, he crouched and humbled himself, that the poor may fall in his strong ones. By his strong ones, he says he crouched and humbled himself. 
What does that mean he does that? You know, he builds churches in the community and give people why Jesus. Did you, did, when, I, when I was explaining verse 10, did anybody hear that? He yes, said half, half, halfway, like halfway. Okay, read verse 10 again for me. Let me go over it again. This network is real. Esau is the damn devil. Okay, read verse 10 again. Psalms chapter 10 verse 10. Okay. He crouches and humbleth himself. Mm -hmm. That the poor may fall in his strong one by his strong he says, ones. He says he crouched and humbled himself. How? By opening churches after he robs the people and introduced the people to white Jesus. You understand? He says that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Christianity. You understand? Democracy. Rainbow Nation. Giving people rights. Men and women are equal now. You understand? That's how he was. That's how he. He, he catches the poor to make the poor to fall by his strong ones. What is the strong? The policies that he implements. You understand? To disrupt the, to disrupt the black family. Because their, their families are not disrupted. It's ours that are disrupted. You understand? And they target the black woman. They destroy the mind of the black woman. So the black woman, when he looks at the black, when she looks at the black man, she sees nothing. She does not respect him. She does not, listen, she don't see the black man. She looks down on the black man. That's how, that's his secret plot to destroy the black family by destroying marriages because that's the same thing he did in the garden with Eve. He's this, this white man is still doing it today. You understand? But them days are over. The prophets are back. Okay? Now, watch this. Read verse 15 now. Come on. Psalm chapter 10 verse 15. Mm -hmm. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Really? Seek out his wickedness till thou find none. Until he's gone. That's what the David says. Break thou the arm of the wicked. Break his arm and, and the evil man. Because he's the evil man of the, he's the evil of the earth. Seek out his wickedness till thou find none. Because once, once there's no wickedness no more on the earth, that means he's gone. Okay? Praise to the most High for that day. Go back to Obadiah, verse 3. The book of Obadiah, verse 3. Read. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. That we thou the jealous... now, hold on. We understand what that means now. David explained it. The pride of thine heart has deceived thee. Read. Thou the dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Let's deal with that. Give me Job 30, verse 1. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. He's giving you the his character. You understand? His discourse. It says, the pride of the Lord has deceived thee. That's why they are greatly despised by these heathens. These other heathens. Thou, shalt, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Meaning what? Where he dwelleth. Okay. Today he just leaned himself up. But this is his natural habitation. Okay. The original caveman. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Job 30 verse 1. Let's read that. Job chapter 30 verse 1. Go ahead. But now they that are younger, they that are younger than I, have no, me in no, derision. No, no. Read that again. Read it right. Verse, three, verse 1 again. Job chapter 30 verse 1. Mm -hmm. But now they that are younger than I have me in derision, mm -hmm. whose fathers I would have disdained to have sat with the dogs of my flock. So now he's saying, he says, now though, those, he says, they that are younger than I, they are younger than us in spirit, you understand? In spirit, because we are superior. That's why it says the older shall serve the younger. One people shall be stronger than the other people. Spiritually, mentally, physically will be stronger, will be better. You understand? That's why it says they that are younger than I. He's making reference to Esau. Go ahead, verse 2, come on. Verse 2, yea. Where too might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age was perished. In whom old age was perished, because now, guess where we at? In captivity, we are being worn out. Read. For want and famine, they were solitary. For want, fleeing for lack. Hold on, for lack and famine, they were solitary. When did this happen? During the dark ages, like we read in in Malachi one. 
We are, for Edom's sake, we are impoverished. That's what this, this is going into the same thing here. For want and famine, they were, so, they were solitary in the Caucasus mountains of Georgia, Russia. Go ahead. Fleeing into the wilderness in former time, desolate mm -hmm. and waste. They fled into the wilderness in former times, desolate and waste during the dark ages because we chased them. Read verse four. Come on. Who cut up mellows by the bushes mm -hmm. and juniper roots for their meat. Because they dwelt in caves. That's what they was eating. Come on. They were driven forth from among men. They were what? They, cr they were driven forth from among men. They were driven forth from among men, meaning what? We did not want to deal with them. They were driven forth from among men. Go ahead. They cried after them as after a thief. As after a what? As after a thief. Keep that thing in mind. We cried after them as after a thief. The way we chased them to the Caucasus Mountains, it was as if we were chasing after a thief because they are, they are the thieves of the earth. They steal. That's their culture. Okay. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief. Go ahead. To dwell in the cliffs of the valleys. Read. In the in caves of the earth. In the And in the rocks. That's what we read in Obadiah. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rocks. That's what we're reading here. To dwell in the cliffs of the rock. In the, of the cliffs of the valleys. In caves of the earth. And in the rocks, mountainous habitation, Caucasus mountains of Georgia, Russia. Okay, read. Among the bushes, they braid. Mm -hmm. Under the nettles, they were gathered together. You see that thing? Among the bushes, they braid. Among the bushes, not among the people. Because remember, it says they were driven, they were driven off from among men. You understand? So that's why it says among the bushes, they braid. Under the nettles, they were gathered together. Go ahead. They were children of fools. They were Yay. children of fools. These white people, he says, they are children of fools. Read. Yea, children of base men. Mm -hmm. They were viler than the earth. You see what he's saying? Children of base men. They were viler than the earth. The worst things on this earth is the Lord says that's them. And guess what? Today, those worst people on this earth... They are ruling over us now. The greatest people on earth. Man, we've messed up. Oh my God, we've messed up. Don't get me started on that one. But we're coming back. We're getting the flavor back. So don't be, uh, don't be discouraged. We're coming back. That's why this knowledge is coming out this day. Let's go back. Obadiah. Verse 3 again. Obadiah. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock come on whose habitation is high whose habitation is high hold on whose habitation is high so guess what remember the mountains they are well it's high rise mountains so guess what today is the skyscrapers you see these buildings that is will be building Santin. you understand Cape Town, Pretoria, America, Europe, even in China and Saudi Arabia, Esau's got influence over there. Because look at the Burj Khalifa. I mean, it's one of the tallest buildings in, what tallest building in what? Is it Saudi Arabia? Is it, huh? The Burj Khalifa? That's Saudi Arabia, right? Not sure Anybody so. know? Has anybody seen the Burj Khalifa? No, sir. Ah, come on, brothers. Anybody has seen the Burj Khalifa? No, sir. Ah, come on, brothers. So it's in Dubai, sir. Dubai. Thank you. The Burj Khalifa, right? Uh -huh. In Dubai. Yeah, same difference. The point yes, is, even them, they are building their buildings like that. Like Iso is doing. High rise, he is, whose habitation is high. They like high rise buildings. You understand? All these tall buildings, yes, it reminds them of the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia, when they were dwelling in caves. Okay? That's why they dwell in habitations like that. 
Okay, read that again, verse 3. Obadiah chapter 1, verse 3. Read. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Mm -hmm. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rocks, of Read. the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Who shall bring me down to the ground? In order for him to say that, that means he's got what? Power. Watch this. Give me Psalms 10 verse 6. Because we read it earlier. Because I know some of you forgot already. Let's read it again. Psalms 10 verse 6. Psalms 10 verse 6. Go ahead. He had said in his heart, I shall not be moved. Mm -hmm. For I shall never be in adversity. For I shall never be in adversity. You see what he's saying? He said in his heart, I shall not be moved. Who shall bring me down to the ground? For him to say that, that means he's got what? Power. Give me Revelation 13 verse 1. We're going to read verse 1 and 2. Revelation 13 verse 1. Revelation, chapter, Revelation on. chapter 13 verse 1. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I stood upon the sand of the sea. Right. And saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns, ten crowns. And upon his head, the, the name of blasphemy. So now John is seeing this beast that is rising up out of the sea. This beast is explained. Give me Revelation 12 verse 3. Let me show you the color of this beast. Revelation chapter 12 verse 3. Read. And there appeared another one day in heaven. Mm -hmm. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. So this great red dragon, you see in chapter 12, he's saying a great red dragon. Chapter 13 is saying what? A beast. Is making reference to the same thing. Who's the dragon? Who's the beast? Esau, Edom, Idumia, a.k.a. the white man. Revelation 13 verse 1 again. Revelation chapter 13 verse 1. Read. Right? And I stood up and I stood upon the sea, and I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So these ten crowns is making reference to the EU. You understand? These seven horns is making reference to the seven major empires of this dragon. The Greeks, the Romans. You understand? Spain, France, Germany, Russia, and Great Britain. And out of Great Britain came the little horn. Today we call it America. But the Bible calls it Babylon the Great. Next verse. Come on. Verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. So now this beast, it says, was like unto a leopard. The leopard, if you look at the ancient empires, Alexander the Greek was referred to as a leopard if you read Daniel chapter 7. So the Greeks are part of this dragon. Come on. And his feet, as the feet of a bear. The feet of a bear. The ancient kingdoms that represented by a bear was Persia. But he's telling you that this beast is red. So he's not talking about Persia. He's talking about what? The symbol of the bear, the nations that took the symbol of the bear in these, in these last days. Which, which nation did that? Russia. Russia took the symbol of the bear. So Russia is part of this dragon. Come on. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. This mouth is the mouth of a lion because the ancient kingdom that was represented by the lion was the Babylonians. But Babylon is not red. So he's not talking about ancient Babylon. He's talking about what? Great Britain. Come on. And the dragon gave him his power and mm -hmm. his seat and great authority you see that part right there and the dragon which is the spiritual demon satan which the white man worships it says and the dragon gave him the spiritual demon satan gave this white man the power that he has today and his seat and great authority that's why he can say who shall bring me down to the ground because he's got power who gave him that power the devil gave him that power okay now Let's go back to Obadiah. Obadiah, verse 4. The book of Obadiah, verse 4. 
Come on. Do thou exalt thyself as the eagle, mm -hmm. and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Do you see that thing? It says, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. The symbol of America is the eagle. The symbol of all the major empires of Esau was the eagle. Though thou set thy nest among the stars, space travel. Esau is doing space travel. 1969, the Apollo, the Apollo moon landing. 2011, spirit and opportunity, they landed on the surface of Mars. Okay, he's doing that. You understand? The ISS is up there, the International Space Station. Now he's just set up the what? The Space Force. Thence will I bring thee down to the ground. Meaning what? When he landed on the moon, when he said the eagle has landed, that was the beginning of the fall of this empire of Esau. The age of decadence, okay? In French, they call it decadence, okay? The age of decadence. Read on, verse five, come on. Verse five. Read. If thieves came to thee. That's the part we wanted to get to. This whole chapter, I wanted to get to this verse right here. Read that slow for me. Verse five, come on. Obadiah chapter one is five. Go ahead. If thieves came to thee, mm -hmm. if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen to thee enough? Read. If the grape gatherers came to thee, would Read. they not leave some grapes? So now Obadiah said, listen, if thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? How did you get destroyed? Because you the thief, you the robber. You understand? It says these the robbers, would they not have stolen till they had enough? Because a noble thief, a noble robber, they're going to take enough that they can be able to carry. Not the white man. The white man takes until there's nothing left. That's the way he operates. If great gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? You're still with decency. You know, you take, you know, leave some grapes. The white man don't do that. He will take the, the, the ground that the tree of the grapes is sitting on and the water underneath. That's how he steals. So that when you look there, there's just a big hole left there. He is the thief of the earth. And he's never been, he's never, because remember, you see what that party says, thieves and robbers. Because those are, these are two different things. A thief will come when you don't expect. And when you are not there, the thief will come and they will rob and they will go. It's, it's covert. The robber, on the other hand, you see it coming. It's overt. They are not hiding nothing. You understand? Thieves and robbers. That's how they operate. Covertly and overtly. Watch this. Give me the book of Jeremiah 49, verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 7. Come on. Concerning Edom, mm -hmm. thus saith the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in Timon? Timon, that's is, Germany. He says, concerning Edom, that said the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in Timon? They are scientists. You understand? They are mathematicians and so forth. Go ahead. Is wisdom no more in Timon? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Because guess what? Timon is the wisest of Esau. That's why if you look at BMW, German engineering, Mercedes, German engineering, so on and so forth. Is this is he's the wisest of Esau? That's why it says, is counsel perish from the prudent because he's the wisest of the of, of the race of Esau, Germany. The Germans. You understand? Watch this. Jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. If grape gatherers come to thee, mm -hmm. would they not leave some cleaning grapes? Of course they would. These are normal thieves. A normal thief would do that. Not Esau. Not the white man. Go ahead. If thieves by night, uh -huh. they will destroy till they have enough. You see that thing? So Esau, he, he destroys everything. He steals everything until there's nothing left. 
Meaning what? He's got an evil, covetous spirit. That's the, that's the way he moves. Watch this. Keep going. Verse 10. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. But I have made Esau bear. Uh -huh. I have uncovered his secret places. The Lord says, I'm, I'm going to expose him. How is the Lord going to expose this man? By using the prophets to bring the scriptures out. Go ahead. And he, and he shall not be able to hide himself. He can't. He can't hide himself. You understand? Read. His seed is spoiled. His seed is what? His seed is spoiled. Meaning corrupted. He's corrupted. Go ahead. And his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. You see that thing? So everybody, he says, his seed is spoiled and his brethren and his neighbors. Because what does he do? He goes around just spoiling everybody. I mean, look at the seed of Japheth, right? Okay, the Iranians. Look at the seed of Japheth that is, is in Australia. When you look at Australia today, they look white. Because Esau went over there and whitewashed Australia. They inhabit, the original inhabitants, they pushed them out. The aborigines, yes. Look at China. The Chinese, they look like us. The original Chinese that they live in the ghettos, they look like us. But guess what? Genghis Khan, that white man, he went over there and spread his seed over there. Today, Chinese look white. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Job 30 verse 5. Let's go back there. We are still we are dealing with the thief now, the thief and the robber. Okay. Job 30 verse 5. Read that. Job chapter 30, verse 5. Go ahead. They were driven forth from among men. Uh -huh. They cried after them as after a thief. Because he's the thief of the earth. They are the thieves of the earth. You understand? It says we cried after them as after a thief. Give me Psalms 10, verse 4. Watch this. Psalms chapter 10, verse 4. I'm going to be moving a little quicker. I've got a lot to go over. Okay. Psalms 10, verse 4. Come on. Psalms chapter 10, verse 4. Read. The wicked, through his pride of his countenance, will not mm -hmm. seek after God. They will not, God is not will not seek after God. They don't seek after the most high. They don't care about this Bible. Come on. God is not in all his thoughts. God is not, is, is not in all his thoughts. That's why during the time of the Maccabees, we forced them to convert to Judaism. It was forced. You understand? It was forced. Watch this. Give me the book of, give me Exodus 20 verse 15. It says what? It says God is not in all his thoughts. Here's an example. Exodus chapter 20 verse 15. Read that. Exodus chapter 20 verse 15. Go ahead. Thou shalt not steal. That's the law. That's the law. Thou shalt not steal. Don't be stealing nothing. That's the law. But he doesn't care about that law. That's why he goes around robbing and stealing. And he has not been called to account for those crimes. You understand? Watch this. Um, give me Psalms chapter 50 verse 16. Psalms 50 verse 16. Psalms chapter 50 verse 16. Go ahead. But unto the wicked, God say, mm -hmm. What hast thou to do to declare my statutes. Read. Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Because you look at Joel Olstein. Who's the other ones? Um, I think there's a one in Australia. Like they call it Hillsong, right? Hillsong something. Hillsong Church. I'm just giving some examples that are known. Okay. It says, but unto the wicked God has said. What has thou to do to declare my statutes? What do you have to do with this Bible? Because you don't want to what? Read the next verse. Verse 17, seeing thou, hast hate, seeing thou hatest instruction, Come and on. castest my words behind thee. And castest my word behind thee. So guess what? We just gave an example. The scripture says thou shalt not steal, but he just cast that word behind him and he goes on and steal anyway. Go ahead. Thou givest thy... Verse 18, when thou sawest the thief, then thou consentest with him. Mm -hmm. And has been partaker with adulterers. You see that thing? That was being partakers with adulterers. Because America is in bed with all the nations on earth. He's the, America is the great whore. 
She is the great whore on earth because she's in bed with all nations on earth. You understand? So, and she's the well-favored whore, by the way. So it says, when thou sowest a thief, then thou contested with him and has been partaker with adulterers. So what Esau is doing, guess what? The nations, like, when you look at the nations, like there's some, the, the nations, they are doing wicked things on earth, right? Not like him. Because guess what? When he sees the nation stealing, you know what he's going to do? He uses the media to put them on blast. That's why you see Zuma on blast. Because Esau has the power of the media. But nobody's putting Esau on blast. Nobody's doing that. The pro, that's why we are here, the prophets, to put him on blast. Okay, go ahead. Verse 18. Verse 19. Thou givest thy mouth evil. And thy tongue frameth the seat. You see, you see what it means, frame. Frame. You see, they framed the former president Jacob, they framed him. You understand? And they're humiliating him, by the way. Because this thing of sending him to jail was in a point of humiliation. We're going to humiliate. I mean, he's an 80-year-old man. I mean, I've seen many cases in the US, right? Where a white woman that that lied about a black man and that black man got killed or put in jail for many many years and now they discovered which that woman actually she bear false witness and the case was i mean she's a she's what i think she was 80 something or something they say oh, Marmar, she's old she cannot account for her crimes look at bill cosby 80 right i think he's 80 right around that age yes, sir, bill around. cosby was in jail Around that, Bill Cosby was in jail. But the white woman, who's even more older, who's, who's, who's around the age of Bill Cosby, she was never allowed to go to jail. They say, no, it's too, she's too old. But Bill Cosby was sent to jail. That's the same thing they're doing to Jacob Zuma. To humiliate the man. That's the, only, that's the reason. And guess what? The coons, they are in agreement with that because they are in the white man's pocket. The Bible is telling you that. The wicked must be revealed. This white man, we are going to expose him for what he is, according to as it is written in this Bible. Read that thing again, verse 19. Psalm chapter 50, verse 19. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, mm -hmm. and thy tongue frameth deceit. And your tongue frameth deceit, meaning what? They'll make things up. Okay, go ahead. Verse 20. Thou really? sittest and speakest against thy brother. Mm -hmm. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. That's what you are seeing in the media. The state capture, the Zondo Commission, the Ebu Ace Mahashule. They're just being put on blast all over the place. That's what we are. Read that again, verse 20. Psalms chapter 50, verse 20. Go ahead. Thou sittest and speakest evil against thy brother. You see what he's doing? He is sitting and he is speaking evil against his own brother. Read. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Mm -hmm. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. He is slandering his own mother's son. Slander. He's, he will be putting out slander campaigns to slander us. Because today, what do they call us? They say, no, we are black Hebrew Israelites. But you will never find that term in the Bible. I remember, what was his name? Hmm. Uh, he was a boxer, Muhammad Ali. I agree, he was a Muslim. They used to call him a black Muslim. And he corrected them, said, no, I'm not a black Muslim. I'm a Muslim. Well, he was not a Muslim. He was an Israelite. But the point is, they make it seem like we are the fake ones and they are the real ones. That's the point. He says, thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Watch this. Give me Revelation 12 verse 10. I'll show you how he's doing it. We read it earlier in 1st Esdras 573, but I just want to, you know, twist the knife. Revelation 12 verse 10. Read that. Revelation chapter 12 verse 10. Go ahead. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, mm -hmm. Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. Thy kingdom and the come. That's what that means. And the kingdom of our God. That means you, that's, that's Matthew 6. Right here. Go ahead. And the power of his Christ. The power of his Christ, meaning the rulership that is going to be under Jesus the Christ. Okay, come on. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. You see that part right there? 
for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. This white man is accusing our brothers. We see it in the media. Every day they are accused. There's always something. He is slandering his own mother's son. You see it with the way. I mean, I mean, these slander campaigns of the political uh, leaders, the political figures in the country, Mahashule. And I'm using those because that's something that's going on in the new media. Everybody knows about that. The looting. Again, I know, you know, it's, looting is wrong because they were stealing. But what I'm going to show you is that, yes, our brothers and sisters that were looting, they are completely wrong because they are breaking the law. Thou shalt not steal. But do you see the, slant, the way that they pushed it in the media? And the numbers that they were saying, no, we lost X amount of billions. Listen, that does not even begin to compare to the billions of trillions of dollars and pounds, you understand, of the resources that they are raping every single day from this continent. It doesn't compare. That's why David said, just wait the violence of your hands in the earth, Mr. White Man. It cannot compare. But because they have media, they are putting this, I mean, I'm, I'm saying Sky News was here in South Africa, following our brothers and sisters around that were carrying milly meal. And you see the thing that they be stealing. Rice, sugar, cooking oil, cabbage. Yeah? These are things our brothers and sisters are, were stealing. Food. <laughs> There's a scripture in Proverbs. Let me see, let me see. Wait a minute. You know, there's a scripture in Proverbs. Let me show you something. You see this white man? This white man is the devil, man. Um, there's a scripture in Proverbs. Let me see. Is it Proverbs 6? Mm. Give me one second. Let me look for that scripture. Ah. Uh. Hold on a second. There is a scripture in, 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 in Proverbs. Let me look at it. Let me see. It talks about, um, you know, somebody stealing because they are hungry. Something like that. Can somebody look that up? I forgot where it is. But there's a scripture that says something like that. Um... Somebody look that up for me. Proverbs 6 verse 30, sir. 6, no? Proverbs 6. Okay, let me see. Let me see it. Yes, read it. Thank you. All praises. Read that thing. Proverbs 6. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 30. Go ahead. Men do not despise a thief. If he steal... To satisfy his soul when he is hungry. You see what the Bible is saying? <laughs> the Bible is saying, it says, men do not despise a thief if he is still to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. I'm trying to show you the looting that was going on in the country, right? Our brothers and sisters, that's what they were stealing. Food. I mean, they were stealing like basic things. Necessities, like you read in Deuteronomy 28, in want of all things. Like they were stealing clothes. They were stealing soap, washing soap, washing powder, okay? Uh, milly meal. That's where they did the flour. That's what they stole. Read that again, verse 30. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 30. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. Read on. Verse in the next verse. Watch this. But if he be found... He shall restore sevenfold. Mm -hmm. He shall give all the substance of his house. You see that thing? They, will re, re, they must return it if, he get, if it's found. But the key is, it says, men do not despise a thief if he's still to satisfy his soul because he's hungry. That's the point. But you see how Esau is, is putting that thing on blast? Because every time you go to YouTube, that thing is still there online. So to see it, and you hear it in the companies where we work in the corporate and all that, the way they speak about our people. But nobody, because he's doing this to get the attention off of himself of the great crimes 
that is committed on this earth. Nobody is talking about Esau, the white man, the great thief, the great Satan on this earth. Nobody's talking about it, but the prophets will talk about it. What I'm trying to show you is that petty theft is being magnified more than heavy crimes that this white man has done and is still doing on this earth. When we upload this video, I don't know, maybe YouTube will block it. <laughs> oh my God, man. Watch this. Okay, where was we at? I forgot now. I lost my train Revelation of thought. 12 where 10. were we? Where? Revelation chapter 12 verse yes, 10. Yes, 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 read it. Revelation 12 verse 10. Revelation chapter 12 verse 10. Mm -hmm. And I heard a loud, a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God come and on. the power of his Christ. Read. For the, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Read. Which accused them before our God day and night. Day and night. Every single day, you, there's only something on, on the news. And when you look at who, who the perpetrator is, being uh, painted as it's always us. That's what we're reading here. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Man, I cannot wait for that day. Which accuse them before our God day and night. The same way they are doing it every day, we also must, we must what? We must also put them on blast. Because I give the appeal to our people on blast in the media. We're going to put Esau on blast with this Bible. Everybody get that? Everybody that agrees say, ah, Aye. 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 All praises. All praise to the most high God for this thing. Give me that in 2 Maccabees 7 verse 31. Watch this. Second Maccabees chapter 7 verse 31. Read. And now, there has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews. Mm. shall not escape the hands of God. Read that again, verse 31. This is the judgment of the wicked that's coming. Read. Second Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 31. And thou, that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews, shall not Read. escape the hands of God. You see that thing? Because this white man, and the reason why I keep mentioning ENCA, you know why I keep mentioning it? Because everywhere you... YouTube is them. You look at their billboards. Their billboard is about the, 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 the assassination of the character of our people in politics. ENC, that's their mission. Look at, you just look at their billboard. You'll see the things they say. You understand? It says, thou has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews. Yes, that's the white man. They are always uttering mischief against us. You understand? And they said, the Lord says, and shall, shall not escape the hands of... They are not going to escape. He's been escaping all these, all these different generations that are passed. He's been escaping. No, not this day. Not on this day when the Lord returns. Go ahead. Verse 32. For we suffer because of our sins. Read that again. First Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 32. For we suffer because of our sins. Read. We says, for we suffer because of our sins. Yes, that's true. The reason why we are in captivity is because we broke the laws of God. But we are repenting now. Read. And though the living God be angry with us a little while for our chastening and correction, Yet he, yet shall he be at once again with his servants. You see what he's saying? He says, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. Because guess what? The Lord is gathering us right now. And we're going to go back home. Read. Verse 34. But thou, O godless man. You see what he's of... calling him? Listen to what the Lord is calling this white man. But thou, O godless man. Read. And of all other most, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without a cause. Because they what? are prideful. It says, and of all other most wicked, they are the most wicked of this earth. 
when you read the book of first Maccabees, when the Greeks came into power, it says the evils were multiplied on this earth. But in the history, what did the white man teach is in the schools? He says civilization started with the Greeks. That's a lie. When Alexander took over, who was ruling? The Persians was ruling. So civilization was already on the earth. The Bible says the evils were multiplied on this earth when this white man took power. That's why he says, and of all other most wicked, he's the most wicked of this earth. Read. Be not lifted up without a cause, mm -hmm. nor puffed up with uncertain hopes. Read. Lifting up their hand against the servants of God. Because that's what you are seeing. They are lifting up their hands against the servants of God. They be blocking our videos. Read. For thou has not yet escaped the judgment of, all, of Almighty God, who mm -hmm. seeth all things. You see what the, you see? It says, because you, thou has not escaped the judgment of Almighty God, who seeth all things. Because these are things that the Lord don't see what he's doing. That's how prideful he, that's how prideful he has become. Right? That's why he's called the Almighty. He sees everything. But in the mind of Esau, he says, mm -mm, he don't see my wrongs. He don't see the evils I'm doing on this earth. Read. Verse 36. Come on. For our brethren, who now have suffered a short pain, mm -hmm. are dead under God's covenant of everlasting life. Come on. But thou, through the judgment of God, shall receive just punishment for thy pride. You see that? He's still going back to that pride thing. He says they are going to receive just punishment for their pride. And we saw the just punishment in Isaiah 63, Isaiah 34. They are going to receive their just judgment. All praise to the Most High for that thing. Watch this. Um, give me, go back to Psalms. Give me Psalms 50 verse 18 again. Psalms 50 verse 18. One more again. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 18. Go ahead. When thou sowest a thief. Thou, when thou sowest a what? When thou sowest a thief. When thou sowest a thief, because this white man, he is the thief. Go ahead. Then thou consentest with him, and mm. hast been partaker with adulterers. And they've been partaker with adulterers. What does that mean, they've been partaker with adulterers? Because I don't think I explained that. Mm. Do I need to explain it? Uh, for time's sake, uh, I'll touch it later on. Sometimes in the future. Watch the Lord's will. Give me Psalms 58 verse 3. Psalms 58 verse 3. We read it earlier on. Okay. Because the way he thinks, I'm going to show you the way he's thinking. The spirit in which he moves. Okay, read that. Psalms 58 verse 3. Come on. The book of Psalms chapter 58 verse 3. Go ahead. The wicked are estranged from the womb. No, no, verse 3. He yeah, 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 verse 3. Re, re, I'm sorry, read verse 3 again. Psalm chapter 58, verse 3. Mm -hmm. The wicked are estranged from the womb. Read. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. As soon as they be born, it says the wicked, which is the white man, it says they are estranged from the womb. That's what we read in Genesis 25. He was fighting his brother already in the womb, trying to put him to death. It says they are estranged from the womb. They go astray, meaning they go the hell off outside of this book as soon as they be born. Speaking lies. Okay, come on. Verse 4. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. Their poison is going into their philosophies, like you read about in Colossians 2 verse 8. Read. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. Meaning what? They don't hear nothing. They are like the deaf arrow that stoppeth the ear. How many times are people be toy toying? The white man hasn't changed. He's still the same, even he's worse now. He says they are like the deaf arrow that stoppeth the ear. The Lord has blocked their ears. Go ahead, verse 5. Come on. Verse 5. Which will not hark into the voice of charmers, charming hmm. never so wisely. You see that part is that's the part that's the problem with our people right there. It says, which will not hack into the voice of charmers. They be toy toying, you understand? I'm a man. You see it in the US because it's all over the YouTube. You see what happens over there? You see what they, listen. I'm gonna show you that 
I'm going to show you how we are Judah. Because in this side of the earth, during the 60s, the 50s, the 40s, you understand? What was our people doing? They were doing saying, I'm a man. Yes. I'm also you men. Charming, charming, the, charming the Bures, because I get the was ruling during the time of Fervut, during the time of Herzog, during the time of Pretorius, during the time of Malan, DF Malan. You understand? Jan Smarts. During all of those, all those um, Edomites that was ruling during the time of the apartheid and all of that, you understand? Terra Blanche. So it says, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers because toy toying, you are trying to charm them. It says, charming never so wisely. You go out of your way to charm them. They still don't hear you. Okay, read. Verse six. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. That's the only way. Hold on. That's the only way they're going to hear. You see what David is saying? Break their teeth, meaning knock their teeth out their mouth. Break their teeth, O God. That's the only way they're going to get you. That's what you are going to get their attention. Break their teeth, O oh God. Read. In their mouth. Mm -hmm. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O oh Lord. You see what he's saying? Break out. He says, break out the great teeth of the young lions, O oh Lord. Because the great teeth, he's got great iron teeth, meaning much military. That's the great teeth. Great Daniel talks about that. Great iron teeth, military, military might. Okay, give me Ecclesiastes 1 verse 15. Yo, I've got so much to go over. I don't think I'm going to be able to go over all of this. I think I'm going to have to do part one and two on this one. Uh, there's so much. Like, I mean, maybe three more hours. I'm not going to finish now. Okay, so I'm going to find a way of just gracefully ending part one. Okay. Read that for me. Where did I say go? Ecclesiastes, sir. Read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 15. Read that thing. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 15. Go ahead. That which is crooked cannot be made straight. Mm -hmm. And that which is wanting cannot be numbered. You see what King Solomon is saying? That which is crooked cannot be made straight. The white man, he says, he sees his poem. He's crooked cannot be made straight. And that which is wanting, meaning lacking, cannot be numbered. That's what he's saying right there. Watch this. Now, let's deal. You know what? Go back to Obadiah. Something I want to deal with. Obadiah verse 6. The book of Obadiah, the six. Come on. How are the things of Esau searched out? Mm -hmm. How are his hidden things sought up? Because everything he does it in secret. He says, how are the things of Esau searched out? The only way to search out the things of Esau, you must come through this Bible. That's the only way you're going to search out the things of Esau. You understand? How are his hidden things sought up? The prophets are the only ones that will be able to search out the things of Esau and sort them up. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalm 64 verse 1. Psalm 64 verse 1. What I'm trying to show you, what everything that we've been reading, is the Psalm way he says. moves, his spirit, hold on. His spirit that is in him is crooked. Now, the, in, the things that he does, he hides things that he does. The evil thing, he's hiding them. But he'll put a smoke screen. You understand? Now watch what David says here. Psalm 64 verse 1. Read that. Psalm chapter 64 verse 1. Go ahead. That they may shoot. Verse 1. Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve mm -hmm. my life from, from fear of the enemy. The enemy, the violent man, the wicked. Esau, Edom, Idumia, a.k.a. the white man. Go ahead. Hide me. From the secret counsel of the wicked. You see that part right there? Hide me from the secret, secret, secret counsel of the wicked. Meaning what? Think tanks. They come together on how to destroy and overthrow us and keep us destroyed. Read. Right? 
Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, mm -hmm. from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. They are the workers of iniquity on this earth. All the iniquity you see upon this earth, they are the ones that are, they, they are the ones that has orchestrated it. They are the ones that have engineered that thing. Read. Who wet their tongue like a sword uh -huh. and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even Read. bitter words. So you see what he says? He says, who wet their tongue like a sword, meaning they sharpen that sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Uh, to, he says what? To shoot their arrows, even bitter words. Meaning what? David is saying he's going into the mouth again. The media. The media. That's the great mouth that was given in Revelation 13. Read. Verse 4. That they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Because we are the perfect. I agree we are keeping the commandments of the Mosa. So they are shooting in secret at the perfect. Read. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear mm -hmm. not. Meaning they don't fear. They have no fear because what? The pride of their heart has deceived them. Read. You know what? That's it. They, that's it on that. Hold on. Let me, wait, 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 wait. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, that's it on that. Watch this. Read two and four again. Read two, then we're going to jump down to verse four. Watch this. Psalms chapter 64, verse two. Go ahead. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. Uh -huh. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Jump down to verse four. Verse four. Read. That they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. Watch this, Isaiah 29, verse 15. How are the things of Esau sought up, searched out and sought up? The prophets will bring them out. Watch this, Isaiah 29, verse 15. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 15. Come on. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. Come on. And their works are in the dark. Mm -hmm. And they say, who seeth us? And who knoweth us? You see the pride? It says what? Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. That's what Esau is doing. And their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? You see that part right there? Who seeth us, who knoweth us? Who's going to see Esau? Who's going to know Esau? Their prophets will know them. If you are not in this Bible, you are not going to know that's the point. If you are not in the book of life, you are not, have not been woken up or you are not applied, you're really not going to see it. You know, I hear it, but uh, I don't really know. I'm not convinced. Why? Because the, only the elect are going to see this thing. The elect will bring it out without fear, without favor. They will. You understand? Read that again. Verse 15. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 15. Come on. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? Who seeth us? Who know that is us that is Pepe is doing all this evil on this earth? Who know that is us? Because you know what? Like, I mean, really think about it. If you really have to sit down and really calculate it, right? I mean, during the time of Rome, right? when they, they were persecuting the apostles and all that. I mean, Nero, the, the emperor Nero, he set on fire one of, one of their old buildings and they blamed it. They blamed that thing on us. Yeah. They burned their own building and they blamed it on our forefathers, the apostles. So they can have something, they can have a reason to go and be killing them. You know, like, it's just, just me. It's just my opinion, okay? You know, when I look at this looting, there's just something behind it. You know, it just doesn't make sense. There's just certain behaviors that you see, like, ah, here. Ah, you know, there's just something going on here. I mean, I was looking at that mall, like, is it in Peter Murray's back? Or is it in KZN, right? One that burns, sir. 
Yeah, that mall that was on fire. I believe it was in I Durban, mean, sir. It was in Durban, right? I mean, let's think here, brothers. So, I mean, that's a new mall, right? And that mall is in the suburb, correct? That yes, mall was not in the ghetto. It wasn't in the ghetto. It was in the suburb. <laughs> you mean to tell me there's no security in that mall? So much so that somebody will have so much time to go in there and set that thing on fire. There's no fire alarms. There's, I mean, hey, I, that's just me. I mean, let's think about it. It's just me, you know. It's just just me, just you know, be thinking out loud here. <laughs> Eh? I mean, that mall, I mean, it's, secure. it's like somebody is setting something on fire. Uh... I mean, and look at the location is where? The location is in Devon. That's the hometown so, of Msholozi, isn't it? So it's in, it's in Peter Marysburg. Apologies. Yeah, Peter Marysburg. Yeah. Peter Marysburg, where is that? Is that not under KZN? Yes, it sir. Is. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, same difference. So... That's Mr. Lose's neighborhood, right? Is it not? <laughs> yes, sir. So, it, I mean, it, it's just very suspicious. It's just very suspicious. And it was on fire. And so much so that even the, the ENCA, surprise. They had choppers already taking footage. I mean, yeah. And nobody, the choppers were not uh, putting, putting the fire out. Fire. They, were, they were taking the video so we can see. <laughs> I mean, listen, it's just me. Okay, that's just me. Okay, okay. I'm going to get off that topic. Isaiah 29 is 15 again. <laughs> oh, boy. You can make this stuff up. Read that. Isaiah 29 verse 15. Go ahead. Go on to them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. Go ahead. And their works are in the dark. Go and ahead. they say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? You see, this is what they say. Who, see, who, who can, who go, who's going to put two and two together to figure out that we are the ones that are actually behind this whole thing that was going on? Think about it. Man, you see, that's why that's why the, that's why the Negro repenting the Israelite with this Bible. Listen, we are more dangerous than a nuclear bomb. I'm telling you straight. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Okay. Um. Yeah, this is just very suspicious activity just going on with this. Okay. Because I've been hearing the president say, no, uh, this whole thing was orchestrated because we watched the news. We, it was orchestrated. It was planned. It was a coup, whatever the case may be, right? But, I mean, I'm looking at, they say this thing was planned out versus the people going to steal milli milli and oil and cooking oil. Eh? Really? Ah, come on. Ah, come on. You know, you don't make no sense. Yeah. Ah, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It does not make sense. Okay. Watch this. Um, give me the book of Second Thessalonians. Okay. <laughs> ah, man. Oh, praise the Lord. Could you give me Second Thessalonians 2? Second Thessalonians 2 and verse 2. Read that. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, Read. or be troubled, uh, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So the Apostle Paul, during the time of Rome, he was saying, listen, don't be shaken in mind as though the day of Christ is at hand, because it wasn't at that time. It was not the last days, unlike now. Go ahead. Let no man deceive you by any means, 
stop right there. Let no man deceive you by any means. Because, I mean, eh? I'm looking at what we just read in Isaiah, right? It says, how, and what we read in Obadiah, how are the, and what we read in Psalm 64, how are the things of Esau searched out? How, the, how his things hidden, how his hidden things sought up? They shoot in secret at the perfect. You see, that's how they move. So here the Apostle Paul says, let no man deceive you by any means. Go ahead. Let no man deceive you by any means. Go ahead. For that day shall not come, except uh -huh. they come a falling away first. Meaning what? Israel, we need to go into slavery first. Meaning the transatlantic sub sahara Silk Road. Go ahead. And that man of sin be revealed. Uh -huh. The son of perdition. The son of hell. It says, first and foremost, don't be deceived. Don't let any man deceive you. Because there's certain things that must happen first before the Lord returns. There must be a falling away first. Give me that in Luke 21 verse 24. Luke 21 verse 24. Watch this. Luke chapter 21 verse 24. Come on. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, no, no. he said. No, 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 no. Luke 21 verse 24. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. Go ahead. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. They shall what? And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The Israelites shall fall by the edge of the sword. That's why it says, except there be a falling away first. We shall fall by the edge of the sword. Come on. And shall be led away captive into all nations. Meaning what? We're going to go into slavery. That's what Christ is saying. Is prophesying what will happen in 70 AD. Read. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles uh -huh. until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the time of Esau's rulership is done. Okay, go back. Second Thessalonians 2 now. Verse, verse, uh, verse 3 again. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Come on. Let no man deceive you by any means. Mm -hmm. For that day shall not come, except they come a falling away first. Meaning what? And we that... need to go into, hold on, we need to go into slavery first. These are the things that must happen before the Lord returns. Go ahead. Go into slavery, and then in slavery, we are going to wake up. The Lord is going to wake us up while we are in captivity, which is what's going on right now. Go ahead. And that man of sin be revealed. And that what? The... And that man of sin be revealed. So the man of sin, once Israel goes into captivity, Israel will wake up. As Israel is waking up, the man of sin must be revealed. Who's going to reveal this man of sin? The Israelites waking up. We are going to reveal this man of sin, the son of perdition, the son of hell. Who's that? Keep going. Let's see who this man is that must be revealed by the prophets in these last days. The son of perdition. Who's doing things in secret, thinking that nobody's going to find him out. Read. The son of perdition. Uh -huh. Opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God. So now, hold on. So this man of sin, the son of perdition, he is going to oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God. So when he's op oppose and exalt, oppose, that means you are against, anti anti-god okay anti-christ who's the antichrist the white man is the antichrist watch this hmm give me that in first john is it oh boy yes second john verse seven read that Second John verse 7. Mm -hmm. For many deceivers are entered into the world. Come on. Who confess, who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Come on. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. You see what John is saying? It says, 
for many deceivers are entered into the world. Remember, I know some of you forgot already. Give me that in 2nd Ezra 11. 2nd Ezra chapter 11 and verse 40. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 11 verse 14. Go ahead. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past uh -huh. and had power over the world with great fearfulness Read. and over the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression. Come on. And so long time doth he upon the earth with deceit. You see what he's saying? And so long time, this is the white man, so long time dwelled he upon the earth with deceit. You see what John said? It says, for many deceivers are entered into the world. Which world? The world that will be ruling in the last days. Esau's world. That must come to an end. Which comes out of the fourth beast, which is America, which is the extension of ancient Rome. America being supported by the EU. Okay? Now, Psalms chapter 10. Psalms 10 verse 7 again. Psalms chapter 10 verse 7. Uh -huh. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit. And yeah, you see that thing? Hold on. It says this white man's mouth is full of cursing and deceit. He is the deceiver. He is the opposer. He is the antichrist. Read. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Mischief. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Go back to 2 John verse 7 again. 2 John verse 7. Mm -hmm. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess, who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Stop right there. Because do they confess that Jesus Christ come in the flesh? No. They say he was not, he was born of an angel. He was not born from flesh and blood like you and me. You understand? He says they, con they don't confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And the flesh that they attach to this, to this white Jesus that they gave to us, he was born of an angel, meaning an angel slept with Mary and Jesus Christ was born. They are white Jesus. But the Jesus Christ of the Bible was born from Mary and Joseph having sex and Mary was pregnant for nine months and Christ was born. That's the Jesus of the Bible. And his color was black, like you and me. He was a black man. So who's opposing this? I mean, it's, listen, the white man, he's the only one. You don't see a Chinese pushing Chinese Jesus. You don't see the Arabs pushing uh, Arab, you know, Muslim Jesus. You don't see that. The white man is the only one that's doing it. Read verse 7 again. Second John verse 7. Come on. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Uh -huh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. You see what he's calling him? He is a deceiver and an antichrist. He is against Christ. Everything that the Bible records what Christ looks like, he is against all of that. What God looks like, he is against all of that. He is the antichrist. But he says many deceivers. Watch this. Give me Matthew. Because Christ said the same thing. He said the same thing. He said something similar. Matthew 24. Watch this. Matthew 24 and verse 4. Matthew chapter 24 verse 4. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Take heed that no man deceive you. He says, take heed that no man deceive you. Who was he talking about? He also was talking in code. No man. Who was the man that was ruling during Christ, during the time when Christ walked the earth? Rome. That's the man he's talking about. Take heed that Rome does not deceive you. Because he, if he, he couldn't have said that. <laughs> he couldn't have said, take heed that Rome does not deceive you. That's why he says, no man. That's the same thing the Apostle Paul said. Let no man deceive you by any means. You see that thing? Read. For many shall come in my name, saying. Stop, stop right there. For many. For many, many, meaning what? A race of people will come in the name of Christ, saying what? Saying, 
I am Christ. Uh -huh. And shall deceive many. And shall deceive many. That's why here on the earth, the people believe that Christ is white, Jesus is white, and the people in Israel calling themselves Jewish are the real Jews. That's how they deceive the whole earth. Let's go back. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 4 again. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. You know what? Give me first John chapter 1, 2, verse 18. First John 2, 18. There's another one I forgot. Let's read it. First John chapter 2, verse 18. Go ahead. Little children, it is the last time. The what? And as he, it is the last time. So do you think he's saying the last time as in, you ever hear somebody says the first time, the second time, this is the last time. No, 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 he's not talking about the last days. That's the last time. The last days. Go ahead. It is the last time. And, and as you have heard that Antichrist shall come. You see that thing? As you have heard that Antichrist shall come. During the time of the 1400s with, uh, you know, Pope Alexander VI of Rome, when they painted the new image of Christ. Uh -huh. Go ahead. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come. Mm -hmm. Even now are there many Antichrists. You see what he's saying? Wait, is there even, hold on, wait. Even now, there are many antichrists. Because when Christ was born, that was the beginning of the last days. So when that's why it says, even now, there are many antichrists. Who was the many? He's talking about a race of people. Esau, Edom, Rome, the Greeks. Today they call themselves Portuguese. Spaniards, French, British, the Dutch, Americans, Russians, Europeans. Okay, read. Whereby we know that it is the last time. It is the last days. You see that thing? You see how our forefathers spoke? <laughs> you see how they spoke? Covertly. That's why Christ said, he that had an ear to hear, let him hear. And he just left it right there. Watch this. Go back. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4 again. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Read. Or that is worshipped. Or that is what? Or that is worshipped. Or that is worshipped. Watch this. Revelation 13. Revelation chapter 13 and verse I believe it's verse 7 what I want. It's not in my notes, so I'm shooting from the hip. Read verse 8. Revelation, chapter 13, verse 8. Come on. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. You see that thing? Whose and names... All that dwell up, hold on. And all that dwell upon the earth shall. So this is future tense. All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. They are going to, in the last days, they're going to worship this white man. That's what's going on now. You go to the churches, even the quote-unquote black churches, you see white images in there. Go ahead. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You see that thing? That's why, the, that's why now, even little kids, you ask them, who's there? They say, oh, that's Jesus. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 4 again. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. Come on. Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, mm -hmm. so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God. He sits in the temple himself. of God. He sits in the temple of God, his images and all of that. Come on. Showing himself that he is God. He's showing himself that he is God. His images his theological, his theology schools, where your T.D. Jakes, your Creflot Dollar, your Bushiri, your Mboros, that's where they go. He sits in the, in the temple of God. If you want to learn about God, come to me. Go ahead. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? I told you these things about who? 
about the Antichrist. Read. And now ye know what withhold it that he might be revealed in his time. In his time of rulership. It says, and now ye know what withhold it. He says, you know what's holding back destruction. You know what's holding back Christ from returning on this earth is that, that he might be revealed in his time. Meaning what? This Antichrist, this white man, he must be revealed as the devil the Bible speaks of and the wicked of the earth that all the evils that are happening upon this earth is because of him. It says, until such time that happens that the earth must know about it, it says Christ is not going to return until that happens. So we're in that time now to reveal him. It says, now he that what know what he withholdeth, what will God would withholdeth who? Christ from coming back. That he might be revealed in his time, meaning his time of rulership. Go ahead. Verse 7. Verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Stop right there. For the what? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. The mis who's the mystery? It says because the mystery of the of it says because for because the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Who's the mystery of iniquity? Jump up to verse three again, so we know who's the mystery of iniquity. Who who is the because it says mystery. Who's the mystery of all the in? Listen, the mystery behind the, all the evils that are happening upon this earth is the white man. Read verse 3 again. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. Mm -hmm. For that day shall not come, except they come a falling away first. Read. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So the man of sin, the son of perdition, is the mystery of iniquity. Go back. Verse 7 again. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Stop right there. For the mystery of iniquity, the man of sin, the son of perdition, who oppose everything that is in this Bible, it says, it says, doth already work. What does that mean, doth already work? Meaning he's in rulership already. Because who was ruling during the time of Paul? Rome. Rome was ruling. So, but the verse before it, it just says, and as, as now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Because the man that was ruling during the time when Christ walked the earth, during the time of the apostles, is the same man that will be ruling in the last days. He's already ruling because Rome was in power. And the extension of that empire that was ruling during the time of Christ is the same empire that's ruling today. They call it what? Babylon the Great. The United States of America. That's what he's saying right there. That's what this is going into. So he's the, this man, he's the special one that must be revealed. He's not like all the other captivities that we've been under, where we sin, the Lord comes and delivers us. <clears throat> we didn't have to do that. There was no need for us to reveal nothing. In these last days, this white man must be revealed because this is his end of rulership. He must be put on blast. So the whole earth must know about it. Who's going to do it? The prophets will do it. I'm trying to put the understanding in your head, you brothers, so you can understand the work that is before us and the dangers that comes with it. Why do you think the apostles were speaking like this? Because Rome was in power and it was powerful. Today, America now is more powerful than all the empires of Greece and Rome, Spain, France, is more powerful than them all. That's why we must stay in this Bible. Read verse 7 again. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Uh -huh. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Until his rulership be over. Until he be taken out of the way. Watch the next verse. Come on. Verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed. 
Stop right there. You see that part? Emphasis, capital letter. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Who's the wicked? We read it in Malachi 1 verse 4. We read it in Psalms 10. You understand? The wicked. The wicked that was already ruling during the time of Rome is the same wicked that's ruling today. You understand? He is always disguising himself, giving himself new names. Now, but the Bible tells us who he is. We'll see by the way he moves or, oh, that's that, 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 that's that demon right there. He's been hiding this whole time. All these captivities, all these captivities, one of, he's been hiding himself because he had to redefine his image during the Renaissance. In 1453, he had to redefine his image. So nobody knows that actually this is the man of sin. He's been hiding himself, you know, calling himself Europe, calling himself uh, French, calling himself Portuguese, calling himself Russian, calling himself Britain. Listen, that's the same man that must be revealed, that the whole earth must know. He is the one. That's why what we read in Isaiah says, is this the man that made the earth to tremble? This man right here? Yes, that's him. Read. Second Thessalonians verse eight two verse eight. Go ahead. And then shall that wicked be revealed, uh -huh. whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. When we teach, when we go out and teach, that's how the Lord is going to consume this man with the spirit of his mouth. The word of God, the prophet is going out to teach, to cut down all the imaginations in the minds of our people. Read. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Meaning what? Christ coming back. Come on. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Mm. With all power and signs and lying wonders. You see that thing? This, that, that's the man. That's Lucifer. That's the king of Babylon. The oppressor. The antichrist. He's got many names in the Bible because he's been taking identities of these other nations. That's why in the book of Revelation, one minute is the leopard. The next minute he's the lion. The next minute he's the bear. Which one is it? He's the same man. Just what? He's a culture vulture. He's just be stealing identities of the kingdoms that was passed. So nobody knows that that's him. You see that thing? Listen, this is some heavy stuff. Read verse 9 again. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with uh -huh. all power and signs and lying wonders. So this man is after the wake, is, is what his coming is after the waking of Satan. He is the great Satan on this earth with all power. Because who gave him the power? The spiritual demon Satan and signs and lying wonders. What was the signs? The dropping of the atomic bomb, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, World War II, 1945. Those were the signs. And when they dropped that mushroom cloud, they said what? They said, God bless America. That's what they said. Yeah, surely God is with them. You understand? Man, this Bible is a true book. Oh my God, this beautiful stuff right here. So I'm going to gradually, this is part one. Okay, this is part one. Brothers and sisters, all praise to the Lord. I'm going to end the class right here. We'll do part two the next time. Let's break bread. First Corinthians 11. In the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for laying his life down for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same man also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, 
in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give Amen. the most high hand. All praise to the most high. 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 All praise to the most high.